The following podcast contains mature language and adult discussions. What are you doing today? Christmas morning, everybody out there. You're clearly with us. You're clearly spending Christmas morning with Kevin and I in the Click This podcast, the Kevin Nash podcast. I, I, I took traumatic uh, brain injury, so. Would you forget my, it was Christmas? Uh, yeah, man, in my mind, it feels like Friday. <laughs> 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 yes, indeed. Well, another year. Almost down. I don't want to. We still have a week. I don't, a lot of good stuff can happen. Turn things around, maybe. Um, God, it just seems every New Year's, everyone's wishing away the previous year more emphatically every year. Is optimism dead? Oh, I, um, gosh, I, like, I don't think that I'll ever have a year like last like the last j- j- january 1st i was just like Phew. oh coming out of tw- oh yeah yeah sure yeah, coming out of 22 tristan was like, yeah. jesus fuck mm. like if, 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 if you got something in store for me worse than this tell me now so i can stick a fucking hollow point in the fucking t- into my dome but i'll tell you one thing boy when the fucking when the uh well, it's time to put up a tree and all that shit. Me and Tamara just, you know, we looked at each other and it was just like, man. But we did put up the aluminum. I've got well, Tristan old... had the, the, the tree, right? There, wasn't it? It was his tree, the smaller one that you guys put up last well, that year? Was, well, that was still, like, we, we always put up the silver one, like, every year. That goes upstairs. Right. That's the one I was talking and about. And that, um... That has all of his, like, all the uh, ornaments he made when he was, you know, a kid. Like, you know, from pre-K on to, I don't know, whatever, maybe nine years old. Like, he made different things. So all of his handmade uh, things go on there. And the, you put the One of them is kind of cool because they, 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 he nice. traced his, they traced their feet. So that you have a, a, a tracing of the foot on brown construction paper and then you trace both your hands on black construction paper and then you put the hands on top of the foot and you make a a reindeer okay and my kid was like i don't know first grade and this fucking reindeer's about that fucking right right yao ming yao ming reindeer I did my. I remember doing mine. Um, I my hog on the uh, brown construction. I opted for right. brown so it would look larger. Yeah. And um, well, since it's Christmas morning, Kevin, I thought that I would uh, open the bar a little here. I'll be drinking throughout the show. I just want to let everyone know this. I've got. I was, wish I, I would have thought about that. It gave me a reason to get get a fucking buzz on tonight. I got a. Uh, so have, so why 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 are, why are you going over this? So, uh, somebody's. A little scotch, a little a little uh, Glenfiddich, and uh, you know it is Christmas, so you've got to do the you've got to do the the eggnog, hognog, a little hognog, and then um, a little lemon water in between uh, to stay to stay hydrated. Sure, everything. Yeah, go ahead, Kevin. You were saying? Oh, I was saying that uh, somebody said to me, I, I put. I, so I read the comments, and they said that um, I had cut back to drinking just one bottle of wine a night and it's just like i didn't say that i said when i drink when i drink i don't drink over a bottle of wine I not that it was a re- not that the one bottle was a regular thing right right it's like it's just like you know what like, who gives a fuck was that was that was the, in that comment was there and what do you what do you cork it with hundred dollar bills kevin 
Yeah, so that's always got to be in there too. So you know, I don't think we covered this. I, I think we covered it in speaking, but we get we always we were always called that we're we're capitalists. We're rich capitalists that are out of touch with the with the with the everyday man. Which and, is ridiculous as I sit here in my Versace robe and sip scotch on the podcast. Ridiculous. I've got my I've got my Patriot brand fucking t shirt on here. <laughs> Fuck yeah. Un- my, is it Under Armour? No, it's Patriot. Oh, wow. it's just, you get that fucking black rifle fucking coffee with it. And Hannity comes over and gives you a fucking rim job. Um but my whole thing is this. So I, I bought my, my, I bought and it was 2023. I bought a 2020 Mustang with 4,000 miles on it. I basically paid $40,000 for the car. And I'm a capitalist elitist that's out of touch while I drive and, and, and with the gas prices and I get 23.7 miles to the gallon in, in that car. Yet, Joe middle class that I have to dodge throughout the fucking day, left and right, is driving around in their $75,000 loaded pickup trucks with rims and fucking King Ranch edition and everything else getting 11 miles to the gallon. Well, motherfucker, maybe that's your problem. Maybe you're probably, oh, I don't fucking invest. No shit. No shit you don't invest. Because you fucking, you, you, you buy you, trucks. Yeah, you, you, you buy the fucking, the, the, the most carbon emission fucking bomb you can have. And yes, I do have a 93 Bronco sitting in my uh, garage. And yes, it hasn't been driven in probably seven months. Because every time I start it up, I put up more carbon than China. So, <laughs> you know, the other thing, too, is uh, cost of living has to be factored in when you talk about like what people make. Which I always hate when there's every, when there's some kind of national tax credit or, or something that gets rolled out where, you know, in the shadow, literally of the Statue of Liberty here, um, I'm getting the same credit as a guy in Pawhuska, Oklahoma, Um you know, and the, and the sliding scale they use. You know, well, you know, if you make over seventy five thousand dollars individually or one hundred fifty thousand dollars as a household, it starts to scale down. Why? For where? Well, I household one hundred and fifty. You're 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 getting by up here. I saw a house. It was uh, there were there was it was on Instagram, and they were showing the difference between eight and six percent. And how much this payment was. The house was in Gilbert, Arizona, which was when I lived in there, when I lived in Phoenix, Gilbert was kind of like, like Gilbert Chandler was kind of like fucking, like, you know, like you you might have a rough part of town or or? not. I mean, just like it was up and coming, but it was like all track homes. This was a fucking track home on maybe a quarter of an acre lot at a swimming pool the size of fucking, you know, a little tiny kidney swimming pool that would fit in this living room of this condo. And at 8%, their fucking payment was $5,600. I'm like, what? I did fucking $2 million house on three acres in Arizona. I mean, granted, I had bought the, 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 the property you know, ahead of time, and we, we put, a, a, you know, a, 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 but I think our payment was like $4,000 for that thing. Mm. Yeah, not anymore. It, I, I, I mean, if I, I, I'm thinking, who the, who the fuck has a $6,000 house payment? You can't buy now because you're, you're still at like seven seven nine, right? I mean, it's it I was think- frozen again last week, two weeks ago. Yeah, they didn't do anything to interest. I don't know. I, I, I think the, I mean, you know, yeah. I know for a fact that you know the economy was better under Trump, <laughs> even though the fucking Dow Jones was at its highest fucking numbers ever again, another record. Yes, it's just 
So, you know, as I'm uh, sitting here and <clears throat> having my cocktails, I was in um, I was in National Harbor in Maryland. We do a little try to get there Christmas time every year. So this was the was this was the Gaylord, right? This was the Gaylord National, yes, on the Potomac, across from uh, well, it's actually across from Alexandria, but also across from Washington. So, I'm I'm. I'm in the old hickory having a steak dinner, right? So we try to hit a couple of the places we like there. Bond 45 is one of them. But the old hickory's in the hotel, and it's a good steakhouse. So we usually hit it one of the nights that we're there. So I go down. And this is one of those Gaylords. Like, the Gaylord down here is gigantic. It's massive. So it's, yeah. It's massive, okay, yeah. Steve. If if you could pull up the the atrium of the Gaylord National, yeah, it's, I think they're Maryland. all like that. It's there's ridiculous. A, there's a Gaylord Nashville. There's one in Orlando. Orlando has one, right? Yeah. <clears throat> so the old Hickory is in there, and um, uh, nice steakhouse. And uh, now now the kids are sick. So my my youngest one has a fever. She's on fire. She's burning up. It's like her goddamn fever is like a hundred and three point something, and uh, so plying her with, with Tylenol, good dad that I am, keeping her on vacation. Um, like I said, it's only Christmas 2023 20, once, honey, suck it up. So uh, I do the Clark Griswold, and and uh, and she comes, and, and we're on vacation. So Anytime you guys fucking make any kind of move in a vehicle, somebody gets ill. <laughs> no, it's, it's, it, there was no... Uh, Oh, 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 my, yeah, oh, yeah, the, my wife. I had to leave Florida last time because my wife had to go to the hospital. Yeah, yeah. But... Um, so yes, she, so she was six, and then my oldest one starts complaining of the body ache. So they're both sick. So I'm sitting down there, but but God damn it, I'm going to have my steak at the old Hickory. So I'm da- I go down and I sit down, and we have our reservation, and a very nice place as you can see there. So I sit down, and um, and I was fortunate to have Robert Parrish as a waiter. I sent a photo of the uncanny likeness. Yes. Um, so I'm looking at the menu. Everything's fine. I didn't want to drink. You know, I'm losing weight. I'm down 13 and a half pounds, Kevin, uh, for, for in four weeks from when I started. What, what, drug, do you, what drug do you take? Manjaro. Okay, thank God, because that o- Ozempic or whatever. Ozempic is still, I believe, only prescribed for diabetics. I don't think you could get well, it. Well, yeah, I saw today on the news where it, there's, there's already like been hundreds of cases of counterfeit and the people are are getting sick as fuck from the yeah so okay really yeah no I'm I'm so far so good so um so I didn't want to drink I sometimes have an old fashioned as you know before my steak but um they didn't <laughs> they, they they didn't have any lanterns or incense so or, I just or, or the fucking mystery machine outside so I ordered a um. So they had some interesting um, non-alcoholic cocktails. There was two. There's one, so there was some Italian flair to it with, with bitters. Puss. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Puss. I enjoy a, a pineapple juice now and again. But they had this, and then they had another tonic. They were sixteen dollars a glass for a non-alcoholic. So I figured this has to be good. The mixologist has to be involved in these in these quality ingredients. So. My daughter orders for my eighteen year old orders first, and she orders the um, one of the two, the the uh, uh whatever it was called, the the Italian one. And he says with a smile, "I'm going to need ID." And uh, I laughed. I went, "Ah, yeah." The... He's like, "No, no, no, I'm serious." I said, "I said it's it's on the menu is non alcohol, not not a." He's like, "Yeah, but it's still a cocktail." So I said, but there's no alcohol in it, right? Or did you guys misprint? Because that's very misleading. He said, no, no, there, there's no alcohol. But um, but um, because it's a cocktail, you need to be over 21. I said, how is that possible? He said, well, you know, the glass comes out in a cocktail glass. I said, so, just so I'm clear, our alcohol age laws in the United States are governed by the glass it's served in. And not the alcohol content, because the alcohol content happens to be zero in that. But the glass, cocktail glass, 
He goes, well, you know, we're in a fishbowl here and we're very strict about uh, what I said. So can you bring it in a kitty cup? I said, bring it in a plastic cup with a lid and a paper straw then. And, and, and we've solved the problem. He said, well, let me see if I could put something together like that for you. I'm like, oh, my God. So I, I, my wife's nudging me. She does not want me to. I feel like I have him on the stand. And he's and and he's doing terribly on the stand because I still don't understand why you get carded for a non-alcoholic drink. Well, that's that'd be like fucking like you going outside and sitting in front of the fucking uh, hotel having a cigarette because there's no smoking inside. And the guy say, "Can I see your medical more mar- mar- marijuana card?" You exactly. Go, I'm, I'm smoking a cig- I'm smoking a cigarette. Wow, well, yeah, but it it, it could it, it could be marijuana. Or it, it just go like this and don't have a cigarette, <laughs> exactly. and he'll tell you, boy, that looks like a cigarette in that glass, <laughs> exactly. that cocktail glass. So I said, you know what? I said, go make her something, please, that, that resembles it in taste, and, and I'll have the other cocktail, the, uh, the something tonic uh, uh, pussy cocktail. He leaves. I'm told, just relax. It's a nice dinner. It's not his fault. But I'm. This is this is a wife. This, this is, is Nicole trying to have a nice night. I'm, I'm <laughs> suspecting that it is in fact his fault. That there's no way under God's green earth That's that not. that establishment prevents someone from from drinking a cocktail. No. So he comes back and tells me they don't have the ingredients for the drink. That's on the. Oh. Mine, mine, my, my, my. Oh, order. for yours, right? I, I said fine. I, I said, I said, give me the one that she ha- is having. Then you're modifying it, but give me the, give me the one. I'll, call, I'll, I'll pull out my ID, and you give me the, the, the regular non-alcoholic gimmick because I have the ID. He disappears again. So now, hold on. My, my question is this though. I, I'm gonna need to see ID. I don't have ID because I'm not. Like, why would you have ID? I'm not drinking. Right. Why would you have ID? Right. And my wallet's upstairs. I brought my card. I'm putting it on the room. Well, I guess the the, the balding hair in the gray is is the uh, is the ID for me because I didn't have to show. But uh, so then he comes back. They're out of those ingredients too. So he's preventing me from giving him sixteen dollars a drink. Thirty two dollars. Nothing's been ordered yet. $32 for the two mocktails, and he's not taking the money. So he puts together some concoction for me and her, and we put it down. So now I'm all ready. So, so, he, so he's like, all right, are you guys ready to order? I said, well, I said, I need a few minutes because I'm 0 for 2, and I sat down five minutes ago. That comment didn't go over well either uh, with others at the table. I just, Kevin, you know, Kevin, you know when you just – you're paying for an experience, right? You're not just paying for a piece of meat. You could stay home oh, I, and get a piece of meat. Dude, that's why I was so pissed off when we went out. So I'm, I'm in another place now, and, uh, and I'm trying to pull myself back. So you know what, though? We order. They did have every cut of meat, though, Kevin, that was ordered. So unlike, well, I mean, unlike our Daytona experience. To, to me, if... if, if the worst case scenario is that I, I'm not served a non alc a, a fucking non alcoholic drink. Like number you can one, still get through the meal. Yeah, no, I'm not number one. I'm not fucking. I'm not buying a, a non alcoholic drink anywhere anyway. I never have in my life. It's first time for everything. It's called fucking water. I'm not paying sixteen bucks for some bullshit. Oh, for the okay. Well, but the, the 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 science behind it, I can appreciate that. It doesn't have to have alcohol to be a to be a a, 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 a finely mixed drink. Anyway, I agree with it. But if I, if you, uh, go ahead. we order, I get to my little one, and she says. She said, I'm, I'm not hungry. I want a lot of Coke. <laughs> that they had no problem with. When you go south of Delaware, fuck it. Anything goes. So Hunter Biden came out and chopped up a line for <laughs> her outside Washington. Um, so, Give her a Chinese Ron 100. Did it with a Chinese bill. Cables. 
Uh, so anyway, so she says, I'm not feeling well. So my wife says, she, she's not feeling well. I'll just give her a little something of mine. So Robert Parrish says, says oh, okay. I'll, I'll get her something. So he goes, he comes back and he had made a pot of ginger honey tea for her and poured her a tea. <coughs> check her ID. T- didn't check her <laughs> tea, but she has a mustache, so it's a- very heavy on the Italian genes on that side of the family. So, but you know what, Kevin? He redeemed himself. And that's the, the uh, he left and I said to myself, that's the way you do it. Not the uh, endless apologies, not, he went above and beyond, made a pot of ginger honey tea for her and brought it out and put the pot. I still would have punched him in the cock. I, you would have, but I couldn't <laughs> complain. I couldn't complain. Then, Kevin, uh, that's very good, Brandon. Uh, that's that's what prevented me from doing the one dollar tip. No, he got. See, his. I wasn't going to leave a one dollar tip. I was going to leave the cash and then add a dollar. So when they went in the back, they'd be like, because that's worse than no tip. One dollar is like saying "fuck you," and then when they would have came back to the table. Because we would have sat there because we had wine left and everything else. I would say, oh, by the way, uh, you guys probably want, want your tip, right? I would have made like the extra production mm-hmm. so I could have just, you know, got a couple, like one more fucking just Jake yes, LaMotta I body know. shot in. You would have. I just wanted to leave. No, it's by been, that you know, point, now, it now I, 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 I haven't been back. You haven't been back. Well, this no. this summer we'll make a return. Just so just so we have a show. Just so we have a show. Well, I'm going to wear a base. I'm going to wear a fucking Trump uh, mag a magna hat and fucking a tank top. You'd have a better experience. They would have treated you better. Uh, like yeah, and, and tell them whatever you do, don't sit me on a fucking uh, uh, table by the ocean. You wanted a booth. Yeah, I wanted a booth by the ocean, but just tell them what... what, what oh, just right in the un, middle. Throw under no there. circumstances, sit us in the middle so some fucking redneck can bang her chair into my elbow. And pull the tables a little closer to us. Please. Maybe, uh, around Please. So, uh, so, so that was fine. Parrish redeemed himself. I leave. That was all fine. I, I go to catch a show while we're down there. The, there's an MGM grant uh, down the road a little bit, about a mile. So we go to the casino to see... The Cirque du Soleil uh, Christmas thing. Um, we go in. I can't. I can't watch people flip for more than maybe forty-five minutes. I mean, it's it's a it's amazing. The the acrobatics, the the physicality. I can appreciate it all. It was a lot. So intermission. We all look at each other. We say, "All right." That Cirque du Soleil shit to me is like watching the fucking Olympic diving. I was going to say, or Ring of Honor about, circa 2006. I got about three fucking minutes in me. It's like, yeah. fuck this. Yeah, imagine sitting there. So there. So after an hour, there's an intermission. We're like, all right, let's go. But now the traffic, because of that area and what they do for Christmas, I can't get, I can't get the shuttle back to the hotel. And the Ubers are all forever because the cars can't get to the casino because of the traffic. So now I'm trapped at the MGM. I wanted to go to Bond 45 for dinner. That's not going to happen. So I'm like, all right, what's in what's in the MGM to eat? We go to a Chinese place. Okay. Um, we sit down, have some decent, I guess, upscale Chinese food, casino Chinese food. And the check comes. And it's like, you know, sign it, give it to her. She comes back and says... I won't do the accent because we're not allowed to, even though it would be totally accurate for me to do the performance as the young Asian lady. I will not. She says, um, I'm sorry, but for full disclosure, I have to tell you, I, I accidentally charged you the $532 that the table behind you spent on Chinese food, not the 193 I think it was, for your table. But we're going to avoid it. It's just going to take a few days to come off your your card. Okay. What? Right. So I'm like, because, yeah, because, like, they reverse it and it doesn't get closed out. But the debit card at the bank. So I go online to see what's going on. And sure enough, there's the, like, five whatever 
sitting there as, as a deduction out of my bank account. So I'm like, all right. I'm like, you're sure this is going to, she's like, oh yeah, yo, look, 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 it says minus. I, I did. It. I'm like, all right, I'm going to leave here, leave the state with $500. So now I'm annoyed. My wife wants to talk to the manager. The manager comes over. She's explaining and blah, blah, blah. She's like, for your trouble, I'm going to give you $75 at any of the boutiques here. And, you know, my wife handled this one. I just kind of sat there and shook Well, that's my a head. perfect, yeah, I, I'll trade that. I'll trade 300 bucks for a $75 gift certificate. But she said, I didn't intend on shopping here. So you're not, so she said, why don't you turn that into cash and take that 75 off of our 193? And she's like, she's like, okay, okay, I'll do that. And my wife takes out to me. She goes, here, I'll pay cash. Just take, take 75 off of it. I don't want to shop here. I just want to leave. She's like, okay, but you know, when I cancel this now, the 193 on top of the 500 is going to still be deducted from you. So I'm like, you have $700 of my fucking money right now? And my bill is now down to one. You're taking 110 for the meal, but yet 700 is unaccessible to me? What if I wanted that 700 So that's a whole kerfluffle. We leave. I can't get back still because the roads are blocked. I'm trapped at the MGM. This was my holiday, Kevin. A, a long, a long story, but this was my holiday. My so I say, fucking. The, 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 anyway, they, the, the, that Gaylord. The only thing that I can say is the fucking the atrium looked like it needed fucking a putt putt on those fucking fake rocks. He brought up the one in Orlando. The one in um, in Washington is different. There's actually little houses. And, they're all the, the and the same. foliage is all real. The foliage, yeah, is all but real. they're all the same. They're all. It's it's, it's that that's the place for the fucking national chiropractic fucking convention know, is, yes. is held. That right. it's always there. That's that's actually the Belvedere Lounge right there. Or there it overlooks that. What is that? Like Chesapeake, the, uh, the Potomac. So that's actually the second floor. So down below that, if you walked straight ahead and looked down, there's a whole other atrium down there. Very lovely. But crowded and See, and, and that's like, you, you are a fucking, you are an elitist. Fucking, Why? We, to go to a I'd hotel? Have been, I'd have been at the Red Roof Inn. You're full of shit, you would have been at the Red Roof Inn. Slid right in that Red Roof Inn. My fucking F-150. Back that shit up. Listen, it's not, it's not <laughs> 1996 WWE anymore. <laughs> you would not have been at the Red Roof Inn. Hey guys, Eric Bischoff here to talk to you about my friends over at SaveWithConrad.com. Are you looking to get out of debt? Conrad and his team can make that happen faster than me firing the honky talk man. Wow. And you know that controversy creates cash, right? Do you know what doesn't create cash? Credit card debt. Save with Conrad can help you consolidate high interest credit cards and all of your other debt into one low monthly payment. They can even help you get the cash you need for home improvements or anything else. They've helped 83 weeks listeners save 500, 600, 700, even $800 a month. Seriously, your papers are going to go down faster than nitro ratings in 2000. Ouch! And how about this? No house payments for two months. That's right, no house payments for two months. And unlike the dirt sheets, man, the reviews do not lie. With over 1,000 five-star reviews, find out for yourself how much Conrad and his team can save you by checking out SaveWithConrad.com today. You'll be grateful you did. NMLS number 65084, Equal Housing Lenders. Woo! Uh, no, Kevin, I know, you know, you told me to watch a movie two weeks ago, Leave the World Behind. Right. And uh, and I finally did. And halfway through the movie, I'm going, <laughs> God, this is a real familiar plot. I'm like, this is real. I'm like, is this anything special? If this is this accessible to me, I just feel like I've seen this a hundred times or something. And I look over at my bookshelf. At my bookshelf, I said, wait a minute. I read this last year. I go over, I take it off the fucking shelf. I read the book. You took the pic. That was the whole thing is when the Obamas were questioned about it and why they chose to produce that with their production was that they both loved the book. Right. So. Well, it was it was somewhat faithful. Uh, I didn't remember 
all the book. But what I did remember was they spent, uh, no spoilers for anyone who hasn't seen it, but they spent a lot more time on the uh, on the relationships and kind of the jockeying for power um, in the middle of this crisis that happens, we'll call it, uh, rather than the kind of supernatural-esque element of the what the hell's going on here uh, part of the crisis, which I guess you need for film. You need the visual spectacle for film i understand well if you don't put that you can't put like you can't call it a thriller right you have to have that as some kind of a thrilling suspenseful thriller but my thing with it kevin and i'll do a quick three sentence or four sentence uh review i felt that if you're going to touch on the abstract deer maybe flamingos maybe um, then there should be much more of a sense of um of a of of um of of interpretation, not so literal with everything, and then there's flamingos. Like con- construct well, it where I'm in a world where there might be the flamingos, and then I can find metaphor or whatever you want me to. Do. Those are black beaked flamingos, which are Florida flamingos. I'm not sure they would migrate from Florida to fucking Long Island in fucking 30 hours. Well, and the other thing was the best explanation you could give me for the deer were they're trying to tell us something. It was a little soft. A little soft in the well, story. What they're, they're saying was we're really not here. We're CGI. Right. Well, well, if that's the case, then then <laughs> yeah, okay. mission accomplished. You got it right. Right. I, now I got it right. <laughs> yeah. It's just you think you think too much. It was the the falling frogs from Magnolia. But um. So all in all, it was. Uh, I've I've spent a worse two hours, but um. You know. Uh, okay. It's still number one on Netflix. Is it really? Yeah. I checked. Yeah. I, I was I was gonna watch Maestro last night. I need to see that too. That's on the list. I was going to watch Maestro last night, but Tamara said it was getting too late for her. So maybe you can knock it out tonight. Send me a quick uh, thumbs up, thumbs down on it. Uh, it'll be too late. She, she's she's uh she packs it in. Before. She's on the, yeah. She's just under the weather. All right. But uh, so, but so Kevin, do you left you left the, you left that film liking it because you told me I needed to see it. Well, I li- I. I <clears throat> Number one, I thought the acting was good in it. Agreed. You know, I think I think the cast was uh, amazing. I just thought there were elements in it that really kind of uh, capsulize where our country is right now. And when he sits and tells basically... We've all heard for, you know, since the the Cold War started, the Russians have been sending uh, agents over to, to set up, you know, uh, the situation where they could overthrow our government. And the easiest way to overthrow a government is through a coup. And if you, anybody that happens to watch mainstream media uh, might, um, I don't know, occasionally come across this, an idea that says, wow, like, I don't know. I just, I, I, I look at it and I say to myself, like, this is what really, here's one that really disappointed me. The Rock was on Joe Rogan. And they showed a clip of The Rock um, announcing his candidacy. No, he no. was he, he was he was giving his uh, support and his vote for uh, for Biden and, and Harris um, la- the last last term. And he says, "Well, you're not with them now, are you?" And he like quickly, went, "Oh, that, good, good, good check, Joe." No, I, but I, I'm involved with a lot of people in the Democratic Party. So he just completely. So, so, what, so you're telling me now that you're 
Do you believe that the well, who are you with then? It doesn't yeah, mean yeah. So, the, so, the, so the election was stolen. <clears throat> because I'm telling you what, right now, like, I know you've got eight hundred thousand dollars. Maybe you can give Rudy one forty one of that. But I, it just seems million, like not it, thousand, million. You mean? That's a, no. I, yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, million. Yeah, yeah. So <clears throat> I, so I look at that and I'm like, I'm thinking to myself like, name somebody. That jumped on that fucking train, that ain't taking it up the fucking poop chute. But but you don't think Dwayne meant that he was, he was on Trump's side of things. I mean, he could be he could be well, a Gavin not, Newsom if guy. If you're not a, if you're not on Biden's team, and we're going in fucking we're less than a year, to, who's he voting for? Is Cornell West still uh, on a ticket somewhere? Maybe is uh, I don't know. If you're asking me, it doesn't matter. Bernie, right? You know, correct, correct. So if you, it's like my friends say, you know what? I like last year I voted I voted Libertarian the last last election. I'm like, really? Who'd you vote for? Yeah, that guy. Oh yeah. So you you you're wondering why fucking that that's such a fucking solid vote? That's like saying I just won't vote at all. Well, it's a no vote, unfortunately. I'd love a third party in this country. We just, well, it's a no vote. It's just not going to happen here. Well, along these lines, uh, I, I just I, I and I know that when it comes down mm-hmm. to it, that you and I are both about keeping the American blood as pure as possible. The, this wasp nation—that's what we want. We want, and even though you haven't read Mein Kampf or any other book. <laughs> You know, uh, that'd be a good name for a channel, by the way. Wasp Nation. Yeah, Wasp Nation. It's like Fox Nation. Like News Wasp Nation, Nation. News Nation. CNN. It should just be right in the same on your right cable there. box. It should be Wasp, on the same thing. Wasp Nation. Bad Lion was watching and listening last week, and he said, every wrestling podcast only talks about wrestling. I love that, Kevin. Sean, talk about everything, including wrestling. He keeps, keeps Are each we talking about wrestling tonight? new and fresh. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Bad Lion, I think that Dwayne Johnson reference was maybe yes. all you're going to get. Kevin's yes. looking for Kevin's looking to even out last week. Well, we are not, we did nothing but wrestling last week. Our numbers <clears> stayed the same. They didn't go up. We had a lot less complaints, which tells me that we only get like three or four hundred. Like we 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 never get. All fucking like if if we talk politics, I think that the the worst one we did was when you did the graphics and actually showed that Trump's tax all the graphs Trump's Trump's tax break was forty eight percent, which was the largest of all served the one percent that made over a million dollars, and I think that people just. That, that that listen to that just could not like they, 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 this can't be fucking right, and they they went to their non fucking mainstream media and went, that motherfuckers are dead on man like they gave a fucking fifty percent tax break to people that made over a million dollars, no the, shit. The um Kevin's Kevin's gauge of success. If anyone doesn't know Kevin, here's what Kevin's philosophy on life is. Okay. If you have two shows that get exactly the same ratings, okay, one of them, there's 50 people outside the arena shaking your hand, telling you you're an inspiration and you had a great match tonight. Kevin is not as happy as if there's 550 people standing outside an arena throwing things at him when he leaves because he... 550 always beats 50. Always. No matter what they're saying. And my mom used to say, if fucking everybody likes you, you're, you're doing fucking, something wrong. Yeah, you're doing something wrong or you're a bitch. One of the two. So fuck that. So we'll get to Israel in just a minute, everybody. Uh, <laughs> Luna M. Edibles says, uh, freedom of speech is about listening. That's why I love your show. Different opinions lead to learning. Now let's all get high. Thank you, Luna. Yeah, this is one of this is one of my T-shirts I want to come up with. Can we just treat each other like we do our pets? 
That's all I want in life now. That's my newest thing. I was fucking around with my dog the other day, and I'm thinking, like, <clears throat> you know, my dog shits in the house. He pisses in the house. I might, like, dude, come on. But that's all he gets from me. Mm-hmm. You know? It's like. But that I need, guy like, in the pickup sitting at the light next to you, you want to throttle by the neck. No. I, I just I just look over at him. I'm thinking to myself, like, like I'd love to give you a stock tip, but what are you going to do with it? Right. Like, not your dog. You're talking about the uh, the, yeah. the. No, my the dog is fucking. Like. My dog's a day trader. <laughs> All Yorkies are, are kind of brilliant with math. He's he's actually got that app where where um all he does is he just bets with the fucking uh, the senators and and fucking the house to just just you, you, have you seen that? No, what is it? There's, a, there's an app. Like I should have wrote it down, but anyway, these the the, the sky was um. Was you know he's a trader and he fi- he, he was like found out that the you know the politicians can basically go into a fucking closed door you know subcommittee and fucking change policies that ends up fucking spiking one of these stocks to go through the fucking roof, walk out fucking make a side bet on it, and they said that when they they started calculating and finding each one of these politicians accounts what they're holding what they're, you mirror what they're holding and he said fucking all fall. of a sudden he said we started fucking cleaning up that's brilliant who came up with that this there's a, he's, i saw him on uh instagram a couple of days ago God. But there's an app too. The with I wrote it down. It's on. It's I've got a, a fucking legal pad at home. I wrote it down on. It's, it's just I had such a good fucking year in the stock market that I don't want to jinx myself. But I, I, there was a quarter where I made three eighty, and I'm conservative as fuck. Percent three hundred eighty percent. No, three hundred eighty thousand oh, dollars. Oh, oh, oh. I mean, I'm I'm really fucking a conservative fucking, which is, is hard, in, is which is hard in, to, which is hard to believe with a with a net worth of only four million dollars that I could pull those kind of fucking numbers. With. You got to stay off the internet, damn it. What? But what? Are you um you hold um you hold any individual securities or are they all in mutual funds and class uh, like um I know you have Berkshire Berkshire uh, B. I got, yeah, Berkshire. I've got uh, I've got some Vanguards. I mean, I've got I've got a Lincoln National that they used to have years ago that has like two dates every year, and like it, you, it can't go like say you start the year and you're it's at a million two, and then you have you have a, another birthday, say April sixteenth. And it's a million three. It locks into the higher of the two, and then if the next day it was six hundred thousand, you 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 keep, but you're only guaranteed like seven point eight percent, which during this fucking nine percent inflation, you're basically you're losing money, but you're not fucking losing the nest egg. Mm-hmm. So Albert Brooks is proud of you. <laughs> Capital trades, is that the name of the? The app, Capital wow. Trades. All right, I, I'd have to look now. at it. Okay. Does it got all the? Yeah, it's got yeah. all the. So there yeah. they are. And if Smart. you you click in, it shows the individual holdings, Steve. So what I'm looking at is all the senators, uh, how much they have invested, and yep, you click in, and it shows you the. And it'll tell you, and it, it, it will when you play this, it will tell you when to make your when 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 to, when to play. You're just following what they do. Look at that. Graphs and everything. Brilliant. Mitch McConnell. Mitch, what's, <laughs> Mitch, what's, what's, what's Mitch got there? Mitch what's... has, was it 170 in uh, in uh, investment? Let me see. So slide over to his stats there, uh, Steve-O. I think it's... Uh... Yeah, 170 in investment's my fucking dick. What's his net? 
Go to Rick. See if you can find Rick Scott on there. See if you can find. Yeah, see if you can find Rick Scott. Yeah, just, look what he's playing with. Look, look at his his fucking put. Look what his fucking coin is. Does that say ninety one point seven million? Zoom in at the top. Then no way. Or is it one point seven? It's, one. What does that say, Steve? We're seventeen point three million in in volume. It doesn't mean he's holding it now, but that's uh, go to the underneath year, this, I guess. Go to underneath this his picture. What does that say there? Yeah, there's his oh. volume. 91, 91.7 million motherfuckers worth like 890 million fucking dollars or some shit. He's by far the richest senator. He's the one that had that huge scandal where he stole all that fucking money. They, they didn't get him. Like a Medicare, Medicaid fucking thing when he was down here in Florida. Yeah, I'm talking about you, Rick, you motherfucker. So there you go. See, anyone who wants to know, what the, there's a great site. So to check you, you, out. See what you, you want to fucking, us? you want to drive around in your fucking Dodge Ram pickup truck? Or you want to fucking sit next to the old Nash in the 5.0 and see what your fucking crooked politicians are fucking doing with their fucking cash? And if you want to find out where the fucking rich and famous are fucking going on vacation, just check old fucking Thomas. Piece of fucking shit. That's a I'm that's thinking, a great. He's thinking about getting out. He's thinking about getting out now. Clarence. Yeah. Well. Be 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 a good time if more stuff's gonna be dropping maybe to to go now. Well, but you know we we talked about this on air already. There's no oversight for the Supreme Court because there's no court higher than you to. I don't know, man. To check you. What was that fucking? Uh, the fucking movie where Michael Douglas was part of it. They had that fucking, they had they they met at night. Do you remember that movie? Fatal they Attraction. At, no, no, they met at no, not the game. They Disclosure. Met at night. No. They were all fucking. They were all judges. They fucking they they pulled fucking like shit out of files like cold cases, and they'd fucking re 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 uh, hear the case in their little, and they'd fucking death. No, I don't know it. It's old. I, th I want to think. Uh, who is the fucking guy? What's his name? Uh, Hol is it Holman? <sighs> Fuck. C. Thomas Howell. No. No. It's no. um. God, he's an old. He's a. He's an Star old Star Chamber. Yeah. There we go, Wes, with the Star with Chamber. the score. Nice, Wes. I think Wes and I have seen every movie together. Like, there's, I think Wes and I are. are if, if, if I was going to pick a roommate, it'd be Wes. I was going to say, if it doesn't work out with Tamara, you yeah. always got Wes. Um, a descendant of the world uh, writes in and says, We need a cop movie with Sean and Kevin as partners. I thought about this. This would be a hilarious film. You know why? Because unlike all the other cop movies where everyone's opposite, we get no crime solved because he's asleep while I'm awake and I'm out on stakeouts when he's asleep and we can get I could nothing just sleep done. During, I could just sleep during the stakeouts. But then they, they fucking, my wife said the other day to me, she fucking, she said to me, she goes, you fucking fell asleep. You fell asleep. And I was watching TV. She says, I tried to wake you twice. She said, finally, I threw something at you and you woke up. She it was says, a chair. I, she said, I couldn't fucking hear the TV. You were snoring so loud. And I said, well, my, I said, but I said, my, I, I never stopped breathing, right? She goes, no. It's not apnea. <laughs> she says, you don't stop breathing. She says, it's like a leaf blower. It just fucking never stops. Right. And I said, that's, I said, and then Cameron Diaz comes up with this, uh, fucking great idea is you know we should make it a thing where couples have their own bedrooms and then they have a bedroom where they rendezvous oh wow what a fucking marvelous fucking novel idea bitch 
been doing that shit since fucking Washington crossed the fucking town. What the fuck? Paul Gibson, what the JYD t-shirt really needed was JYD, a dog, and the nativity scene. Mm. Good show. Thank you for keeping it going. Paul Gibson, great suggestion. Great suggestion. And if, listen, if we're going to go that route, dog better make sure that he was manscaped for that photo session. Guys, New Year's is coming. Step into 2024 with confidence, and you can do it thanks to Manscaped, okay? Where resolutions are met and the hairs are neatly kept. As the new year approaches, why not make self-improvement a breeze by keeping your body well-groomed? Introducing Manscaped's Performance Package 5.0 Ultra for your package, the ultimate all-inclusive kit, okay? Designed to help you feel clean-cut and confident as you should. Featuring the powerhouse lawnmower 5.0 Ultra, this next-gen trimmer ensures precision and ease when tackling your toughest hair. Kick off 2024! With a trim above the rest. You're going to use code CLICK, K L I Q, at manscaped.com for 20% off and free shipping. That Performance Package 5.0 Ultra is here. Let me tell you, it's got futuristic tendencies, okay? Very bored genesis of them. Mm. The Weed Whacker 2.0 ear and hair and nose trimmer, um, aftercare products like the Crop Soother, the Ball Aftershave Lotion and Crop Preserver, anti-chafing ball deodorant, two free gifts, waterproof. Guys, it doesn't end. You're going to get boxers with it, too. And um, as resolutions come and go, a well-groomed you can be here to stay with Manscaped's latest and greatest. Okay? Get 20% off and free shipping with the code CLICK, K-L-I-Q, at manscaped.com. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com. And use the code CLICK, K-L-I-Q. Happy New Year to you and your balls. We all use it here, guys. We're not lying. Kevin, I I, I feel like I got something in my mailbox every two days. From I uh, actually, um, my uh, anesthetician, it was time for me to get, I get a facial every six weeks. And she said, could I please trim my beard down as much as possible? And you can see how it I manscaped this bitch down tight, right? So she could get in there and then put some put some collagen and some other goodies and suck all the shit out of my fucking pores. And so you do I do the whole go, deal, I, huh? You do that uh, oh, that little yeah, vacuum man. thing that sucks out. Oh the... man, did you see the garbage that comes out of your fucking face? Oh. Good God. Mike M. says, do you want to make friends or make money? Kevin, you and the Click are the exception to that. You guys made money and are lifelong friends. Also, forget the haters. The combination of wrestling and non-wrestling chat is just what makes this podcast stand out. Keep up the great work. Thank you, Mike. And uh, lastly, Nate Nizzle. I'm glad that Kevin and I have the same sense of humor. I don't know if it's a cause for concern that we both chuckled when Mr. Surgent was found naked on top of his decapitated mother's body takes a special person to find humor <laughs> at that time but nate you and kevin have done so and uh i want to remind I, everyone. I actually read that i read that comment and i said see if everyone uh, wants to join the live audience here and be part of the fun you go to click this tv.com you get the show early you get it without commercials you get it uh you get to join our friends that are with us here in the live audience could you, would you, with a box? Could you, would you, with a fox? It's what it's time for eggnog here on Christmas morning. Hope everyone's had. I never a good got holiday. the eggnog thing. No. No. Nah. Is it? Uh, you don't like a? Uh, do you do you, you put the little bit of the whiskey in there too, or you just go straight uh, straight eggnog? What do you? What did you do? I thought I thought that I thought you put something dark in it. I mean, light in it, like vodka or something. No, no, I always went with rye or, or whiskey. I mean, I guess you could put vodka in it, but I don't know how that would taste. A little, a little drip of the of the scotch in there. But, uh, you know, uh, Kev, I sent you something today uh, wherein I was surprised to read. I saw, I saw, I saw MJ had some, MJF had some comments on uh, AEW. And I wanted to click in because the comment that caught my eye was that he was talking about how he feels that there's a lot of negativity online 
because their product is so different and it makes people uncomfortable. So I wanted to drill into that a little because I've seen the product and I, I don't know what was different about it. Maybe you can tell me. But then I went on to read and in that same article, he went on to liken AEW to being Jewish. And that that's why there's so much anti-Semitism right now, because he feels that they are so different, those of the Jewish faith, um, that people are, well, I don't want to, I'll read the actual quote, I don't want to put words in his mouth, but um, he felt that, uh, I'm bringing it up right now, that he felt that maybe was uh a fair comparison to make. Quote, yeah, well, here's why. I'm actually going to relate this to Judaism because I'm very good at my job. When you think about why people hate us and why we constantly get attacked, it's because we're different and being different makes people uncomfortable. I genuinely feel that the reason that a lot of the time you'll find a lot of, don't get me wrong, there was most certainly constructive criticism online genuinely, but you'll find a lot of the non-constructive criticism online, just wild, irredeemably messed up shit that people are saying that is either untrue or just mean, you know? And I think the reason that's happening is Monday Night Raw is the longest reigning episodic television show of all time. We've only been on, what, like four and a half years. That's new, and that's different. And what's different scares people. Okay, so, no, that's not why it's, let me help him out. MJF. Uh, it's because people me, are let me make, douche let me, bags online. Let me Absolute make, let me make one. Let me make one statement, first of all. So, if you were to take, if you take the ascetic out of it, if you were to take, like, say, say him, and put him next to me, and then put a black guy next to, put Booker T next to me, which of the three of us is, is more different? The Jewish guy, the big white dude, or fucking Booker T? Optically. Who's most different? Who's the most different of those three? You're all different. Each of you, each of you has different quality. In just the, a universe with those well, three. If you, I'm just if you were, the three if of you were, to, if you were, to, if you were to, to categorize, would you say, oh, he's he, the, how? How would you know I'm not? He's Jewish? least different from me in that lineup. He's but I'm just least saying, no, but I'm just saying me. though. I'm saying though, from a physical characteristic, if if a black man had committed a crime. Or a Jewish man had committed a crime. I just say he was a Jewish man. A Jewish man committed a crime. A black Jew? No. Oh. Just a Jewish guy. Okay. And that was the lineup you had. The three of us. Mm -hmm. I pr I probably picked Booker T. If the black if a black man committed a crime, See, and that, that was the you're lineup. You're killing our chances of getting any kind of a cop movie. Yeah, it, no, th this is the cop movie. <laughs> the two of us. No, I'm just saying. I. I different fucking is pro wrestling how different can it be Maybe well we've talked about that when we talked about tna and the fucking stupid ring thing and sure i mean i, I read something today where like paul had already offered like contracts to moxley and somebody else when they get out of their aew deals I think it was Samoa Joe and Moxley. Steve, did you see that at all? Wesley, did you see that? I'm just saying that they're gonna they're gonna grab um, they're gonna grab the, the the guys. You know, Chris is just I I I, I wouldn't be surprised if they didn't grab Chris. I just think that Chris is, you know, what's Chris now, 55? Jericho? 53? I don't know. How old is he? I don't know. But yeah, he's a little older than me, so maybe maybe 50, eh, 55 seems high. i put him in 53 maybe? Anyway. I mean, I still wrestle. I mean, I re when I came back and wrestled Paul, I was 55, 56. But I think that this... he. 
he's being a company guy. You got to put a spin on it and say the product is different. The bottom line is people enjoy trolling. And if you show a little, if you show a little weakness, it's not difference. It's people are just absolute assholes. If you looked hard enough, you can find really, really awful comments, insidious suggestions about anything out there. But something being different doesn't doesn't necessarily like they showed a thing on uh, on Instagram, and I don't think that they did it for effect, where they brought back Jr. in Oklahoma City. And JR came down, and they, they showed him. You know, they played his music, and down he came to the ramp. And then they showed the you know the camera whoever was taking the the shot of him. Clearly, the entire upper deck was was wide open. The bottom deck, as I'm, I'm looking towards the uh, ramp, so the right hand the right hand side, which would be opposite hard camera, um, is the bottom. The bottom bowl is not full. And as they circle around, they stop before he gets to where he's seated because that side's completely empty. Mm -hmm. So if you're doing something that's that different, that's causing you to draw 4,000 people as opposed to the 13 to 15 to 18,000 that Raw is, I don't think that Raw... Because of the longest, it, uh, because their gun smoke doesn't put seats and asses. Because there was a lot of years that fucking they had to do some creative fucking shit on Raws. Especially when they'd run the Staples Center for a Raw and have that three hour time difference. Mm. But now you got asses and seats. So it's. I think we're so optically driven. That if your show doesn't look like a cut scene from a video game, it's it's like watching a fucking snuff film. And I think sometimes the production of AEW is is is, is I mean to say it fucking lacks would be fucking as a, as opposed to the opposition. Yeah. Agreed. I mean, we've covered that. That anytime you try to emulate WWE, it's going to be it's going to be a, a long sure. road, and you, you really, I'd say, not different enough. AEW. Uh, maybe these days. maybe fucking. I mean, maybe if they'd fucking shoot that shit in 1080 instead of 720 or whatever. Shoot it black and white. It worked for the NWO. <laughs> Stooges. So if you live in Colorado currently and your presidential election were today. Oh, fuck. Um, before the appeals process and the uh, appeal to the Supreme Court, you wouldn't have Donald Trump on the ballot. Do you see what Romney said today? Mitt? No. No, Romney. The oh, fucking... I think he said Romney. No, Romney. <laughs> I, th I thought they put him he up on said, a shelf somewhere. He said <clears throat> fucking that he would not run in Colorado if they were to do this to Mr. Trump. I did. Yes, I did. And I, he put it out on his fucking Instagram, and I fucking responded with, well, I'm not going to run either since we both do j probably just as well. In that state. Yes. <laughs> like, you're, like, you're, like, fucking, like you're really a fucking head. Like, whoo. Double knockout with Christie for one one fucking percent. Kev, where do you stand before we get into where do you stand on now? This is of course the the little used clause of the Fourteenth Amendment that dates back to the Civil War times disqualifies anybody from office uh, who engaged in quote insurrection or rebellion against the United States. I'd How love, much do I'm, you have to have to prove that without it being a politicized vote? I look at it this way because people are saying the last time this was used was the Confederate fucking war. They didn't want the Confederate generals back in the government. Mm -hmm. 
Name the last time there wasn't a peaceful exchange of power from the presidents. Let's do that. Let's go back in history. Find the last time that a president didn't fucking go out there and say, I concede. Yeah, I no, wish this... it, I, I, <clears throat> find it. I mean, now this it, goofy it, man was it, I, was, was it Eisenhower? I don't even think it happened. I, this I'm goofy just saying, man child. Find out, find out when it happened. But find that out in the, and of itself is not insurrection and rebellion. I'm, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that you're, you're, you're saying this, this clause hasn't been used. We've never been in this situation before. Correct. I'm just saying you know? it dates back to there. I, I, I understand that, but my point, my point is it's like Meadows. Oh, I, want, I, 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 I don't want to go to Georgia. I want, I want this to be federal. Right. No, fuck you. Like fuck no fuck you, it, you're, you're you're not going federal. You're gonna you're gonna run, you're gonna run it here. So he may get to wherever fucking he gets. And see, this is this thing that people don't understand. People think they'll they always say like fucking Nash hates Trump. Are you? I'm like Chappelle. I can't fucking believe that fucking when when people asked him. So you don't pay taxes? No, I don't have to fucking pay taxes. I, I, I know the system. I can beat the system. This mother, and I love when they say shit like this. I love when they say this. Well, Trump is just going to wait them out. Trump ain't waiting shit out. Trump's lawyers are waiting them out. Trump knows it's a long game. Trump knows once they fucking... He's. I think today his numbers were sixty-one percent. And 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 fucking the uh, and the Republicans. Haley's eleven. Fucking DeSantis is eleven. Like it's unbelievable. Like, who, who the fuck has ever like this is unbelievable. Sixty-two fucking percent. Where's our fucking boy at? I don't even see him. There he is, 4.1. Ramswamy? They measure that from the crack of his ass? Christy's still hanging on there. 3.2%. He's going to fucking get that CNN fucking talking head Democratic or Republican spot. Right. So, but now, because of this, litigation is pending in 13 states. Um. But challenges the, being appealed in two. When, when when the fucking when the when the Supreme Court doesn't fucking go out on a limb and do anything, then it just leaves it open. So they'll still he'll still be on the like as of to, if it was tomorrow he would be on the Colorado ticket because. It hasn't went to the Supreme Court of the United States. Yeah, but the but that means the current judgment stands, though. Mm. I think the current judgment would have to stand until another court overturned it. All right, day of. I just I don't see it happening. I don't I don't see it happening. No, I, I don't either. I don't I, think I don't see I don't see Colorado printing right now uh, ballots without Trump's name on it. I think this is all. This is one of the fucking most bizarre. It's like it's just unbelievable. It's kind of like one of the horror films where, like, Jason doesn't go away. Like, he keeps coming back. You, you sh- shoot him with ninety three indictments. You drop a Colorado judgment on his head from the thirty fifth floor. And it's somehow you know this. This was uh, like the roaches o- o- and, o- o- and Don. I think Obama, uh, Obama's second term, I think he was at forty one percent right now, and I think Biden's at what thirty six against Trump. Oh, with Trump, they were. Uh, I thought they were tied. No. Just, just the two of them. Trump against Biden. What, what do we got? Right, I thought they were tied. Steve, uh, what's today? What's today? 
I saw a graph. I know that I know that okay. Obama's approval Obama's approval rating at like this this exact same time in his second term was right at forty one percent. So that's what we should back call the Joe, auto call, industry. Call Rogan. Rogan will know. Anyway, <clears throat> call call Gagne and Magnum. Yes, the the come. Um, well, it depends which survey, I guess, right? Just, election. Thirty-four, thirty-five. Yeah, so they're like almost tied in any of the. These are all different polls we're looking at here, and The Economist, Yahoo News, forty-three, forty-three. The Economist, Yahoo News, forty-one, forty-four. Oh, wait, no, that was that's Whitmer. Oh, there. Wait they, a minute. Newsom forty one forty five. Wait a I second. I guess they were polling. This is mainstream. This is pretty mainstream. This right is here. mainstream media. I want fucking some guy that's got fucking eleven hundred followers on fucking Twitter or X. I want some. I want some fucking something with some fucking meat on its bones. Guy with a shed in the woods. I want a goddamn cocktail with no alcohol. That's what the real men have, brother. <laughs> because I, I, my fucking ID is down in my car. Well, we shall see in the coming days. Uh, we shall overcome. We shall overcome. You know what I want to overcome? I want to overcome charges on are we my... Let the, we're letting this whole Jewish thing just fucking slide. Which? We didn't get to Israel yet. Okay. I'm assuming that's what you're referring to. Well, not, yeah, not your just, accountant. I'm just still. I'm, I'm absolutely horrified that they they killed three of their own hostages. Well, I'll I'll somehow tie rocket money into um, I'm Israel. Sure, I'm this sure they'll be, appreciate that. Really, <laughs> always a challenge when I have to read a commercial, and Kevin goes, "I want to talk about the dead Jews." <laughs> but um, I said the Jewish hostages. But what? I don't read it, and with respect. But what uh, is important in my bank statement, in my debit card statement, not only the Chinese restaurant that's charged seven hundred dollars for not my, only the Disney Channel it'll hit you up for fucking thirty five fucking subscriptions. Hundreds of dollars in my dining that night. Rocket money, everybody. This let me explain this to you. This is an app. That is, I think it's fun to use, but it will save you hundreds of dollars a year, I guarantee you. In this current climate, in this world, where everything we do is subscription-based, something like rocket money is like a, a gift from God raining down on you. If I asked you how many subscriptions you currently have, could you list all of them? No, not off the top of your head. Guarantee you that. And if you asked me that question before I logged on to Rocket Money, I wouldn't have been able to tell you either. But um, I can't believe how many subscriptions I had. And forget about duplicate subscriptions, which Kevin has mentioned, like uh, T had something Ugh. going and he had something going in the home. Just stuff that you're paying that you don't want anymore will show up on the Rocket Money app, and it's as simple as a click of a button to get out of that recurring charge. If you feel like money's flying out of your account, it probably is, dude, um, because of all these subscriptions. Between streaming services, you got fitness apps, there's delivery services, uh, parenting apps, maybe, when you had your baby and you just forgot Rise to, to get Rise Mushroom out of it. Coffee that you can't get the subscription shut down. Sure. In Rock it'll shut them down. That's right. So it is a personal finance app. It finds and cancels your unwanted subscriptions, monitors your spending, and even help you lower bills. Okay. You can see all of your subscriptions in one place. If you see something you don't want, bang, cancel it with the tap of your finger. Rocket Money has over 5 million users and has helped save its members an average of $720 a year with over $500 million right now in canceled subscriptions. So stop wasting on money th wasting your money on things you don't use. Cancel your unwanted subscriptions by going to rocketmoney.com/nash. 
That's rocketmoney.com slash Nash. Go there. Let them know we sent you. The slash Nash is very important, folks. Show love to the people that keep this show on the air, like the, our friends at Rocket Money. Thank you, Rocket Money. Kevin, you were referring moments ago to three hostages, Israeli hostages, taken captive by Hamas. One was a, like a special forces guy, too. They were tracking. The, the Israeli military was tracking where these three were. They found them. There was gunfight with the captors who were shot and killed. These three escape. They leave where they were being held. So you're, you're in this situation to start with. You're taken captive. The cavalry comes, blows away your captors. You get the hell out of Dodge and run for your life. You hole up somewhere else. And this is how, I don't know how this goes as horrifically wrong as it did. But they're yelling. And they they make a, a makeshift white flag. Is it, I mean. They're unarmed. How, how common is it for the Palestinians to speak Hebrew? Yeah, they, they are yelling in Hebrew, right? And they come out. And they're shot and killed. Well, one actually, the, 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 the red-haired guy, I think, actually made like a more of a run for it. And he said, like, almost like, like please don't kill me in Hebrew. And then they, the, uh, the leader realized that he was speaking Hebrew and, you know, called him to cease fire, but that he had already sustained... Uh, the wounds that, that killed him. Mm -hmm. and, I, and it's not like I'm sitting here thinking that I'm playing a first shooter game. I mean, number one, what we have to, what we have to look at when these situations happen is because I've sat and watched, I know it was mainstream media, but I sat and watched. And when they made a call, to call back everybody within the age, and I think it's with the cutoff is 46. And uh, it was like if you, if you, if you, you know, like you do two years, but the cutoff for, for, for being called back for the reservists was like 46 years old. How did they arrive at that? 46. I don't know. It just seems it, arbitrary it, and strange. It, 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 it was the, I remember because. Like there was a guy that wasn't a uh, like wasn't a an officer, and they were talking to him, and I'm just like, what the fuck? What this guy's like? You know, he looked like my uncle going back to combat. And um, but when I like the the the, t the times that we we wrestled in, in in Israel, you know, like you'd get on the bus and there'd be like two really hot girls in like Israeli fatigues. And they were just doing their two years, mm -hmm. you know. So that's the whole thing. Like everybody does two years, and then you're putting that data bank. And then th if you're a, a dual citizen of the U.S. and Israel, they were calling those those guys back, <coughs> men and women. <coughs> Would so, you have those girls leave the boots on just for like added something? Oh. <coughs> I didn't mess around over there, man. But would you? Would the, huh? boots stay, would the boots stay on? Maybe just for no, a because time. I, I see. I, I don't really feel that that um, I blend in very well over there. In this particular exchange, we're talking about um, a dog was sent in first t for a recon with a GoPro camera strapped on him uh, in where they where they found the uh, the hostages. So the Israeli army sent the dog in. Uh, the dog was shot by the Hamas captors, but the camera kept rolling, which is how they got this footage to piece together what had actually happened, interestingly enough. Um, the uh, Strangely, I, I, there was a quote from one of the family members, Iris Haim, mother of uh, Yotam, who was one of the uh, 
captives. She released a recorded message on Wednesday saying uh, she told the soldiers involved in her son's death that she blames no one except for Hamas. Quote, we want to see you with our own eyes and embrace you, said Mrs. Haim in an English translation put out by Israel's government. None of us are judging you or angry with you. I saw another one of the mothers that was, was not so uh, forgiving. Yeah. So this, the, the Israeli military is saying that this is a clear violation of, this is uh, Admiral Hagari, um, said that this is a uh, violation of the open fire policy. Um, they're investigating uh, all of it. Does that include the uh, the absolute stupidest bombs you can possibly? I remember when uh, the Russians were were dropping what they were calling uh, unsmart. Well, dumb bombs. I've heard them referred to as. But is that too? Is that yeah. offensive in I don't, this, the woke I, culture? I, don't, I, don't I wouldn't want, say. I don't dumb. want to get canceled over right, you over can't, don't say dumb. over armament an armament, but um, they. Um, they when were, you said missiles last week. I, I thought we were really in danger. Go ahead. They uh, they so when Russia was was just indiscriminately dropping bombs, two thousand pound bombs on on Kiev and wherever else, and it was and they were killing tons of civilians, and and just basically. Knocking out, pur- purposely knocking out power grids as they came closer to um, the winter, and they were just everybody was just up in arms over these these um, these war crimes, and then we turned around, and the evil is Hamas, and we're dropping thousands. Of 200 pound bombs and um, we're knocking out water sewage so now you and then we're telling them we're, and I'm saying we because we're we're as much as involved in this as anybody else is because you know we didn't vote to cease fire yeah so mm-hmm. this is this is this is this is America too. And, those support uh, those support is blind support. Let's say is waning. It's you know, of course it is, of course it is because you know now 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 you you basically have created a situation. Uh, I'll I'll let you take this over because we we discussed it earlier. But now the Suez Canal is basically shut down because of the Houthi rebels from Yemen. Not to be mistaken with Houthi and the Blowfish. <laughs> they um, are, they're not involved in any not, way. Not at all. Plus Darius Rucker singing country anyway. Right. But uh, no, it's so, so he you, pretty cool with a hijab on his head, I think. He could pull He could off. pull off anything. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, why never, is this happening, right? Why are the Houthi rebels... Uh, in the Red Sea, um, attacking ships. ships. Because mm-hmm. their, their position is until uh, there's a ceasefire, they're going to continue to, 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 to make uh, life as miserable as possible for those that have to use the Suez Canal. So they're attacking commercial vessels with drones yes. and ballistic missiles and this and is lot, to and, keep, and, and, mm-hmm. and lo and behold, guess what's on most of those vessels? It'd be probably that crude oil that is below three dollars a gallon again for gasoline. Well, they've already major shipping firms like um, Maersk, uh, Hop Hog, uh, BP Oil. They've officially said they're diverting vessels away from the Red Sea, which is precisely what they want, create that chaos. But also, think about it. If there's aid or support or weaponry that's going to be coming in to aid Israel, it would also be coming probably through 
this was connected to the, the Red Sea there. So this is, and um, Iran once again involved, right, uh, supplying the uh, weapons to the uh, Yemen, to the rebels in Yemen, Yemen. rebels, the Houthis, the Houthi and the Blowfish. You know, it, it's it's that um, that the, the situation of, and to me, it's I look at it and I say. There's it, nobody is was is dumbfounded that they've got 300 miles of tunnels underneath these these mm-hmm. areas. I mean, the, like that's where they functioned. That's how they functioned. And I get. I don't. I don't know. I, I, I'm not. I'm not Israeli. I'm not. A, I'm, I'm not a commander. I'm not in the service over there. I would just think that. And you see them carry these missiles, like out of these tunnels up through these, and that's I mean it's like they like they've got. What are you? And what are you going to do? Are you going to you're going to send troops down booby trap tunnels? It's a death. That's a death sentence. No, I mean where where they thought they were crucial crossings and under buildings with. Some of the hospitals, uh, if you remember, uh, some of the issues arriving there was with that they they had intelligence that there were entrance ways to the tunnels under some of those hospitals. So they've been trying to hit them from the top. As far as the Yemen goes, and, and this doesn't get reported much, the Times of London, I had to go to to find this, um, The uh, you're not hearing much about it, but there is U.S., it, there is Pentagon uh, activity. They've been deploying uh, a ton of firepower to the region, more than it has in decades, um, shooting down drones and trying to counter well, they've strike got a co- these they've, missiles they actually in the have, Red Don't they have like a, 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 a 10-country coalition? Sending, th- fighting, they may. Fighting this whole situation. I think the UK is part of it. I, I, I want to think... The, Maybe the Canadians. I mean, there's people that there's a coalition that's that's uh, involved in in fighting this this situation that's occurred to, with with the, with the the Houthi. So it's, but I guess that's not mainstream. They said the exercise is a massive mismatch. This is per the newspaper, the Times of London. Um, U.S. firing munitions. Uh, worth millions of dollars to counter counter Houthi drones that cost in the region of $1,000. So I guess they're having some success, but the problem is that it's a scare tactic and that's keeping some of the shippers from um, getting the... Uh, well, they did. They also, they boarded uh, earlier. They boarded and, and took some of the ships. Right. I saw that video. Yeah, you know, with the helicopters and no, it's it's a it's a fucking shit mm. show. And I mean, and, and the thing is, is like I I don't forget that if they don't fucking slaughter the, the Israelis on the side, I mean, if, if that doesn't happen, we're not having this conversation. And you know now now they've they've done this they, they start to shit where they start fudging with the numbers oh it wasn't 1200 oh it was this oh well a lot of the people that were were killed at the music festival those were friendly fire from the apaches that they sent over because it was hard to indiscriminately know who was what and they start fudging with it doesn't fucking matter you know in prague yesterday the, the, the guy killed 14 and wounded 25 that's fucking huge numbers. Mm-hmm. Fourteen dead's huge. If it's six hundred, if it's twelve hundred, that's fucking astronomical fucking numbers of civilians that's been killed. Mm-hmm. And that, that that can't go. Like, oh, we should just cease fire and fucking we should just like turn the page. That ain't gonna happen. They're not gonna. They they have to fucking oust this, and it's like fucking. This is the next. This is the next fifty years of this conflict, is is going to be reaction to these months right here. Right. 
any talk about coexisting in some kind of two state solution. Fuck that now after what's been after these numbers we're talking about of of people slaughtered on, we, on both sides. Same, yeah, Civilians. It, yeah, it's there's so many fucking I mean, there's like twenty nine thousand Palestinians have been killed. And that's just the ones that they've been able to, to I mean the, the and then they then 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 you've got the propaganda that you hope is propaganda that has actual pictures of the devastation and then plot lines to where they're going to fucking build high rises and and shit that that are going to look at the ocean and then you hear the other bullshit the conspiracy theorists that say that right off the shore of gaza is a gigantic fucking natural uh, gas reserve and they you know so that was the case. Boy, we didn't we didn't do what was that? What was that? Weapons of mass destruction that I, Iraq had. Oh. So it happened that Iraq was the only fucking uh, oil producing com- country over there that fucking wasn't an OPEC. Right. We just decided to fucking we did we attack them. I don't know. It's a, it's a huge mess. That's it. We 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 usually and you and our you're fucking worried about AEW. Uh, not anymore. I I, I know we're just <laughs> we're just treating them like 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 the Jews now. The MJF has made this clear to everyone right. in the midst of this conflict. I, I mean, to to me, it's when you fucking when when you bring up pro wrestling and put it in a fucking sentence. With what the fuck's going on in our world right now? I'm sorry, man. I mean, I did that job for fucking 30 years. There was never a time where I fucking thought that that was anything more than sports entertainment. I didn't think we were making fucking a social statement. That it wasn't, I would, you know. Well, clearly he knew that this would be. A controversial statement, and therefore yeah, carried. But, so by the what media is it? What does it do, though? If, when you're the champion, you're, it's, it, it's one thing if you're a heel. He's babyface now. Hmm. Yeah, but I mean, it, desperate, desperate measures, desperate times call for desperate measures. You see those houses; they got to do something to get coverage. Right. Well, you know, it doesn't mean fucking, you know, they're fucking the, the food in the cafeteria is shitty, so you go on a fucking shooting spree. And that's about the fucking, I mean, come on, man. It's, it's fucking, let's it's, it's be grown ups. If you had a $148 million judgment against you in court and you claimed you had assets valued at, one to ten million dollars, you'd have to file for bankruptcy, wouldn't you? Boy, that paperwork was ready to drop the day, the day oh, after that judgment. Talking about Rudy Giuliani, I was just curious because the the day that they fucking deliberated day one before they came back on the second day and, and gave the uh, he said that he'd have some shit the next day that would make everybody's head spin. Was that his fucking bank balance? Yeah, the list of creditors made everyone's head spin. So when you file for bankruptcy, of course, you have to list your creditors and who who your money is owed to that you're claiming exceed your income. Um, they include, in Mr. Giuliani's case, claims from Daniel Gill, a New York man, who last year slapped Giuliani on the back and asked, what's up, scumbag, and was subsequently charged with assault. Uh, he has sued for $2 million this year. David Off Hutcher and Citron, a law firm, is claiming $1.36 million uh, in uncla- unpaid fees. Um, and that was lodged where's, by... Where's Giuliani's, Giuliani's uh, Purdue Pharma fucking money? I mean, you do much with that? or I don't know. It's going to have to... Pay, anything he's got going to have to pay off... Uh, who else is in line for some money from Noel Dumphy, 
a former associate who sued Giuliani in May for $10 million, alleging abuses of power, wide-ranging sexual assault and harassment, wage theft, and other misconduct. Another claim is from Hunter Biden, Joe Biden's son, who sued in September, alleging total annihilation of his digital privacy through attempts to tie his legal and personal problems to his father through claims about a hard drive and a laptop computer. Uh, claims from the voting machine companies, Smartmatic and Dominion voting systems in lawsuits over false how much, allegations. How much is it? Those are huge, aren't Listed they? as unknown, the fees in that case. What was, wasn't Fox 780? Uh, it was, yeah, it was, it was big. Uh, uh, accountants, $10,000 accountants. IRS, he's got tax debt of 521000 and 202000 to the, uh, Federal government, and then also I think there was some New York state taxes. Yeah, two hundred four thousand and sixty one thousand. Um, yeah. So that's maybe who... he can get the fucking uh, Deutsche Bank to um, go out and uh, price his fucking real estate for him, like they Wasn't did that, for like, Trump. Like for, yeah, Mar Lago's worth a fucking billion nine. So that's where I was for a while, Deutsche Bank. Um. So was Stephanie Rule. So I guess Rudy's mainstream uh, media. Mainstream media. <laughs> um, listen, if you thought you had this, is some bad stuff we're talking about here, right? The nation in shambles. Can we turn to our faith? Can we turn to religion? I here's some here's some footage I found of some a couple a couple of church. Um couple of uh, church fails place where you can go where everything where they're supposed to have the answers right i'll narrate for anyone listening here there's a sermon being given and a lot of like candelabras on the altar here and you'll hear them in a moment heavenly father thank you thank you lord jesus for the This oh asshole. God, because joy has come into the world. Thank you. Pause Lord, this for a minute. Some some Savior asshole brought. knocked down a string of candelabras and then then set up the empty ones after he knocked them down. But you got to give the fucking the guy doing the sermon. He's got to be no no sell of the week. No selling the shit. Ain't nothing, man. He didn't even break. Well, what's he going to do? Turn around and go, you fucking dumbass. I would have, and so would have you. Yeah, that's why we, we wouldn't be in front of a congregation. He is. Pull him. We have our own congregation. It sets it up. Dejectedly turns and walks away. Worth watching. All right, bring up the audio for this one here. Now we got a... Uh, this this is the great. Just watch the just watch the brought. percussionist. Here we go. There we go. An, an entire tree falls on this son of a bitch who's trying to play the drums. Now watch. He tries to fight this tree while continuing to play the drums. Now he's playing it with it on his head now, which is unbelievable. But he's fighting with a tree. Whatever you don't, don't get fucking vertical. There we go. <laughs> and then once Boom. again. Boom. Again. <laughs> right on his head. Grab a, grab a different hole, motherfucker. Yes, yeah, seriously. He's still fighting with the tree, everybody. Jesus. <clears throat> uh, Kevin. While we're watching some video, it is time for you to meet the pop artist Mawang. If you never have, is this fucking? Am I am I, am I tapping on this? This is the tap out, folks. Welcome to the tap Brock's out. Brought you by. <laughs> we play a little segment here, brought to you by Blue Chew. Um, do I even have to tell you what Blue Chew is? Blue Chew is the answer, guys. In a day and age where you don't have to want for anything, I stick a needle in my stomach every Friday, and I'm down 13 and a half pounds. Now I can go to my friends at BlueChew.com, get a chewable little tablet, and uh, and I'm ready to rock and roll in just a few minutes. Whenever, whenever. See an extra inch of that motherfucker. Where the land, manscape it. Take the Blue Chew. Fucking boom. Click this has made me a new man. And if anyone out there is ordering 
what we advertise, you are as well. So what the hell is Blue Chew? You know what it is, BlueChew.com. It is the unique online service that delivers the same active ingredients as Viagra, Cialis, and Levitra, but in chewable tablets and at a fraction of the cost. You take them anytime, day or night. You plan ahead. And then when you're ready to go, your erection is is like nothing else. Uh, listen, the best thing about it, it's done online. The anonymity and the ease of the process. There is no reason any man alive shouldn't have BlueChew.com sending them their superpower in little blue tablet form. Take many time, day or night. Sign up at BlueChew.com. Consult with one of their licensed medical providers. Once you're approved, you receive your prescription within days. Best part, all done online. No visits to the doctor's office, no awkward conversations, no waiting in line at the pharmacy. And uh, and it works. And we've had testimonials from our people. Long and strong and down to get the friction on is, is, is what they tell us. Blue Chew just wants to help you have better sex, guys. So deliver, discover your options at BlueChew.com. Chew it and do it. And we've got a special deal for our listeners. As always, you're going to try it for free when you use the promo code NASH, N-A-S-H, at checkout. Just pay $5 for shipping. That's BlueChew.com, promo code NASH, to receive your first month free. Visit BlueChew.com for more details and important safety information. We thank Blue Chew for sponsoring the tap out. So once again, Kevin Mawang. As in, oh, excuse me, dear, when you sit down, if they feel something, it's Mawang. Um, here is Mawang. Let's see how much we have. I just feel that a lot of times in music, we just haven't caught up to a sound. Like, we're not there yet. Like, Morrison, ahead of his time, I think people rejected the doors initially because the fusion of poetry and that that kind of uh, uh, long, lingering... Uh, like the end. Well, I the, think the the, end, I think, I think more Morris C at the same at the same token. And Morrissey, if you're <laughs> Morrissey. a Morrissey fan. Yeah. Um so which, here, which which I am. Let's let's check out Mawang, Kev. Let me know when you've had enough of Mawang. Ah fucking kill him. <laughs> kill him. <laughs> that that was it? <laughs> that was oh it. fuck. Give up a little more of my wang. Come on. Oh, Jesus. This is like listening to fucking uh, Yoko, Yoko Ono with say. fucking Chuck Berry. He t- it's basically Yoko Ono with a, with a furry upper lip. Uh, Maybe it is, gets uh, better. Maybe it gets better. All right. I'll give it another 30 seconds. Okay. Turn it off. This guy needs to immediately fucking join one of the crews because he's definitely doing 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 some hard time in some fucking prison. I was going to say it almost is like he takes one in the shit box <laughs> oh, there for a minute. <laughs> Fuck. Oh, thank you, Mawang. Thank you, Ma- thank thank Mawang. Thank you, Mawang. <clears throat> uh, Florida man or Jersey guy, Kevin, your record is stellar. I think you're on a, a wild undefeated streak here for the last couple of months. Um. Uh, two headlines, if anyone's playing for the first time. Uh, two headlines, one an actual Jersey guy and uh, one a, an actual Florida man. And just from hearing, just from hearing the headlines, Kevin is always able to distinguish one from the other. Here's the first one. Man arrested for allegedly abusing dogs at daycare, swinging them above his head by their leash. And man killed after putting child he thought was possessed into a fire striking deputies with a rod. First man arrested for allegedly abusing dogs, swinging them above his head by their dogs leash. Could, dogs could be anywhere. So I'll say Jersey. And then because we have so many deputies down here, I'll go Florida. Well, you're not wrong. <laughs> yeah. Our friend swinging the dogs with the leash was arrested in uh, Mass... Uh, Massapequa, Andrew Lauren Lorendi. Uh, Seen on video swinging multiple small dogs by their leashes uh, over his head like a lasso and then releasing them, causing them to fly down the hallway. Okay. Um, And then uh, our friend here in, uh, your friend in Florida there. Let's see. What's his name? 
tried to burn a nine-year-old boy he believed was demonically possessed before hitting a sheriff's deputy in the head with a metal rod. He was shot dead during this on uh, Tuesday. Uh, in uh, on at the intersection Route of US 98, Route 98, Sebring, out by the out by the track. Okay, now Sebring is where in relation to. It's a ways. Where you might be, okay. They run that uh, 24 hours of Sebring down there. It's a car. Like a... Oh, oh. By the way, if, you, if you're if you up in Palm Coast and you'd like some uh, some extra product, some deodorant or popcorn, um, it's sitting on my porch down there because the uh, ad agency uh, sent it to the Florida address. I got, bo- right I got both. The address. But if you want some more, it's I, there. I, I got both now. But what I'm talking about, and they did finally get me one to my proper address, it's called Kudo. I want you guys to remember this is very exciting. Let's welcome Kudo. If you're on the hunt for a new guilt-free snack, meet Kudo, K-U-D-O, the official protein popcorn of the UFC. Kudo's popcorn's revolutionary cooking method allows each bag of popcorn to have 10 grams of whey protein isolate. Boom! In every bag while still tasting absolutely delicious. Which one are you eating? ASMR here. This is the white cheddar. White cheddar's really yeah, good. Yeah, I'm rocking the white cheddar. Guys, you can do <coughs> garlic parmesan, which I have not tasted yet, but white cheddar and the, the sweet kettle corn is dynamite. Kevin, you haven't had that yet. Yeah. Get I'm not, a, I'm not. I'm not a garlic guy, so my, I gave my mother-in-law the, the, the garlic. Guys, get in on the snacking revolution that MMA athletes Michael Chandler, Robbie Lawler, Bruce Buffer, and even Dana White endorse themselves. For a limited time, our listeners are going to get 25 percent off your entire order with the code CLICK K L I Q at kudosnacks.com. It's just delicious. If you're hitting the gym, going for a long hike, or just looking to eat healthier, you should almost certainly be taking whey protein to boost muscle protein synthesis and the growth of lean muscle mass. There are so many reasons to do this. Make Kudo Popcorn your new go-to snack, guys. It's gluten-free. It's preservative-free, 100% whole grain, keto-friendly, only 70 calories per cup, made right here in the US of A. Okay? One bite in Kudo Popcorn is going to be your go-to healthy snack. You're going to be amazed. So here's what I want you to do. For a limited time, Kevin's listeners are going to get an exclusive 25% off discount when they use the code CLICK, K-L-I-Q, at kudosnacks.com. That's 25%, 25% off with the code CLICK at K-U-D-O snacks. You don't have the bag, do you? It's upstairs. I just brought this. I have a whole bar here. I couldn't carry everything. So I just right. threw it in a cup. You're going to get stabbed by Wesley for chewing in the microphone. Um... The I, I, the bag is like it's like for to get ten grams of protein is it's and I'm not a snacker but it's like nothing it's like mm-hmm. I get I I go through two bags at a time like you know sitting down so mm-hmm. I always grab two bags and take it to the couch but it's um it's it, for for me man if it says ten grams of protein on it and it's and it's not like e- even slightly filling. It's just like perfect little little snack. I love it. Kudo popcorn, guys. Go to kudosnacks.com. K U D O snacks.com. Don't forget that code. K L I Q. Click. Get you 25% off. Wesley is called ASMR. Kids fucking sit and watch this stuff for hours when people chew into a microphone. It's supposed to have a visceral reaction. People are supposed to be hearing this and enjoying it through me and clicking. The uh, co- the going to the goddamn website, kudosnacks.com, and putting the code in and getting the 25% off. This well, is all I'm well thought out today. I'm starving down here, so you're killing me. All right, the high spot of the show, as always, brought to you by our friends Mickey Ray Sinatra and Courtney and their Get Blitzed Lit Aid. That's right, we're talking nano-infused Delta 9. This is where you heard about it first, I'm sure of it. Mickey Ray, not that, not that. You didn't have any reach before, but I'm sure that's where most of you heard about this. What is Delta 9 sip and syrup? I'm going to tell you, goddamn it, it's super potent stuff. Think of THC on roids. It's a syrup. Mix it in any beverage, like tea or white soda. Kevin likes the uh, key lime flavored syrup in the uh, Diet Sprite. 
Um, little, as little as a teaspoon, fast onset, five to 15 minutes. This isn't like those chewables where you don't know in an hour how it's going to drop you. Um, you'll know fast onset because it's nano infused and it means it goes right to your bloodstream. It bypasses the breakdown in the liver. It's what we're talking about. It's not gas station Delta eight bullshit. This is the real deal. It's THC Delta nine, the THC you get from marijuana. If you're in Maryland, you can visit the stay lit. I was just down there. Maybe I should have looked up the, uh, Brought the family to the Stay Lit Smoke Shop. Um, if you, Did you uh, guys have ID? Exactly. I, I think my daughter could have walked in and gotten that, but not yeah, a non-alcoholic but, but not beverage. A, exactly, right? You can get this shipped to you uh, from the Get Blitzed website to all 50 states without a med card. As long as you're over 21 and right now, you can save 15% by entering the code CLICK, K-L-I-Q, at checkout. Go to get-blitzed.com. That's get-blitzed.com. And uh, try the Delta 9 THC sip and syrup lit aid from get. I'm getting lit tonight. Who goes? I'll I'll uh, I'll uh, I'll help myself uh, get to sleep a little bit in a couple I'm gonna, hours. I'm gonna get lit tonight. See, I don't have to get up in the morning, so I can go wild now. I could stay up till like ten. Um, don't forget gotta, to get that fifteen percent off. I was up at, I was up at ten a.m. today. I know. What did you you sent me something this morning, right? I had to look twice and make sure it wasn't my brother. My brother's name is Kevin, too. So Just a cock pick. Look at, well, the, <laughs> I saw the size, and I realized there was no one in my family. It couldn't be my brother. <laughs> Hashtag Ask Nash, everybody. All right, enough fun. Let's get to the serious stuff now. Paul Whiting, who has the worst farts in the locker room and was dropping gas, a common occurrence when in the ring. Where did flatulence stand in pro wrestling, Kevin? Uh I don't know, man. We we ate we ate pretty healthy, I guess. Fuck, I don't remember. Oh, I don't some remember, of that shit. I don't even remember. Like that was that's such taboo in the fucking car. If you cut cheese in a fucking car, oh fuck, you get heat. Huge heat. Before we used to fucking buddy system to the point where fucking somebody had to fart. They say say fucking air out. All the windows would go down, and then the guy would rip. And you'd still go, oh! But, I mean, if you fucking just tried to to, 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 to just bust Sneak one. one in there, yeah. Unless you fucking are driving and you can lock the windows, then it's kind of funny. Oh, if you're the douchebag who, <laughs> yeah. who, who tears canvas and then just, yeah. yeah. If I eat a fucking uh, one of those fucking frozen waffles from like a a Hampton Inn, mm-hmm. give me those fucking sulfur farts. See, Honky Tonk Man on one of our shows always said that uh, uh, you don't you don't use the bathroom in the room where you're rooming. You quote shit with the marks downstairs. Um, that, Go down the you, lobby. Yeah. Yeah, you go shit with the marks, and then you. Well, when expect, I mean, I remember one time I was with Robbie Steiner. We were in Tampa. We were splitting a room, and uh, I I was going to get up and do something, and I fucking just he sounded like that fucking dog, that snickering dog, that, and I'm like, what the fuck is he snickering about? And I went in there to just get a drink of water or something like that, and fucking I said, and he, I said. What? I said, what are you laughing at? He says, nothing. So I said, fuck. So I went in and I opened it. I turned the fucking light on and he had sh- put the lid down and shit on top of the lid. See, I don't fucking get this, you assholes, all of you. you fucking, I, I guess th- that's amusing when you're on the road 400 days a year or whatever the fuck. The condition of the fucking bathrooms when we would have shoots... The- I mean, if if anyone hit the toilet with piss, I guess it was it was an event. I I don't know. And shit, wrestlers and shit. I still can't get to the bottom of what it is with you guys and shit. Shit ribs. Sh- sh- when you're mad at someone, you're shitting in the food. It's just it's just shit. It's is it the lowest common denominator? Is it just I the, think the, so. The low hanging fruit. You just no. It's just I think that that's something that um. I remember when Sting, like, used to fucking, and this is Sting, which, which, like, when you get a USA Today, I think he got Bagwell several times, and he would actually shit. 
in the like, paper? Take Bagwell's paper in his room, shit, and then leave it in front of Bagwell's door. Because Steve would go up, you know, he was always an uh, early riser. And then I remember sometimes, like, getting a ziplock, a zipper, a ziplock. I remember fucking uh, Bobby Heenan telling me a story where fucking uh, Patterson shit in a paper bag and put it downstairs and Bobby and uh, and Gorilla were down there. And uh, actually, Pat told me this story. Pat says, yeah, the motherfuckers are down there, man. Like, every fucking maybe 15, 20 minutes, I go down and give it a fucking kick, fucking break the crust. <laughs> he says, the motherfuckers, man, we're, we're at each other's throats all fucking night long. And motherfuckers had no idea. And I just, you just see Pat just down there fucking kicking that fucking paper bag and busting that crust on that shit and going upstairs and laughing his fucking ass off. Smoke fucking chain, chain smoke of cigarettes. Anytime we get a Pat Patterson impression, it's it's worth it. Goddamn. Tabernacle. When we would do the, the what's in the bag on you shoot, of the things I would pull out that the worker had a name, the first name in the business that came to mind, a, a bag of weed, a bag of Coke, a syringe. Then there was a log of shit because there was always a story. It was as prevalent in the locker room as pills. Pseudonym 1821. Hey, Kev, we saw the worst match of all time last week on the tap out. But could you tell us the full story of what was truly the worst match of all time? The Master Blasters versus Brad Armstrong and Tim Horner. Corny tells the story about your tag team partner, Iron, missing two spots and turning to you mid-match and screaming at you in confusion. Confirm or deny, and what happened to your partner? So you're going to tell me that a match where a guy missed two headbutts is fucking worse than that fucking thing we watched last week? Where the one guy, we didn't even know what he was. He just had a fucking mask on. He was just standing there. Looked like fucking looked the like Gimp. like the second referee in the ring. No, he looked like the fucking, bumps. he looked like the, the Gimp on fucking Pulp Fiction. Uh, no, so they, they, you know, they, it's like a week before I'm supposed to make my debut. And we go down to... And at this time, there was no power plan or anything else. But Jody Hamilton had a uh, a little wrestling school, and that's where I like I broke in out of there. And it was in a fucking Quonset hut, and we had one half of it, and the other side of it was uh, carpet remnants, no air conditioning, no heat, mm. a half-ass. It was like a boxing ring. With a fucking uh, carpet padding, carpet, said, right? carpet remnants, and yeah. a fucking canvas on it, and it was fucking stiff as fuck. So we went down there uh, with uh, Tim and, and Brad, and we went, and so they're telling me, "Don't worry, this guy got taught by Ox Baker." You're talking about a fine fucking, technician. Yeah, yeah. Talking about like fucking like you know, like oh okay. Well, geez, I've I've only been in the business for fucking a week, and I know that's not fucking any, <laughs> anything to fucking be be bringing up. Brad Rangan's camp was full, so they sent him. Yeah, to they, Ox. they sent him the ox. You know, it's always the fucking deal that ox could talk him in the fucking could talk him in the building. And one minute into the fucking match, they make char- leave. They charge you double to fucking leave. Uh, so we get there, and the fucking they, they, they're going to start. And, and uh, my my partner's name was Corey Pendarvis, and um, they said, "Okay, Corey, uh, you start with with Tim." So uh, they lock up, and uh, Jody says, "Take an arm." And Corey Pendarvis looks over. <laughs> Jody goes, what do you mean? I went, hmm. I said, fuck. I said, watch out. I said, lock up. We locked up. And poof, I grabbed the arm. And uh, I'm thinking like, great. I'm going, now, this isn't taped. This is live Clash of Champions out of Asheville, North Carolina. And I'm like, Ugh. 
Like, fuck. And you know, and they, they, they always say this. They say that, kid, you'll know you got it when you can hear the people. That motherfucker missed a headbutt off the second rope by four feet and just no-sold it, got up, and went to drop one from his feet and missed that one by two feet. And I heard the fucking, I mean, it, I just heard the people just completely fucking just shit on us. Then they ch- started chanting LOD wannabe because they had just lost the Road Warriors. And they just became the Legion of Doom up at Vents. Mm-hmm. And they started chanting LOD wannabe. And so we went out, got through that. I hit a power slam. We did a double shoulder tackle for the finish. I got the cover, one, two, three. So not not that bad, but, you know, you kind of think you got a clue. So we go on the road, and the first night we're in Dayton, Ohio. And decent little house. I mean, nothing great, maybe 2,000 people. But we're now we're, we're wrestling Tim and Mike Rotunda. So they go out, fuck a bunch of shit up, and Mike says, get him in. So we lock up. And Mike, th- this is back when you you were in two different locker rooms. So we, you, I haven't, I've never talked to Mike before in my life. The first time I'm talking to Mike is in the ring in Dayton Flyer Arena in Dayton, Ohio, and he says, take my head. I said, I take your head in a headlock? He says, yeah, take my head. I said, boom, I take his head. He says, can you hear me? I said, yeah. He says, all right. He says, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to grab your arm and take it behind you. Like, I'm, I'm like, he says, just like, and he gives me the Iggy on my, on my, on my arm. So he says, loosen that one up. So he takes it and puts it behind me. He says, now turn me, turn me, you know, turn me around so you can back me. And I backed him in, caught him with an elbow. And he said, and we did like one little spot. And um, he says, good. He says, now tag your partner in. He says, and remember what we did tonight. So each night he'd add another little spot on, another little spot on. So the, we, it's, it goes, we go, Asheville, let's see, we go Dayton, Canton, Ohio, one more, like a little Marion, Indiana, maybe, <clears throat> and then we go to Hammond, uh, which is just on the other side of uh, Chicago. We go to Hammond, and... I wake up th- that morning and we're at, we're staying in Chicago at the Embassy Suite out by the Rosemont. And I wake up and my my tag team partners, all his bags are gone because I I put him on the he didn't have a credit card, and uh, so I put him on the roll like the pull out couch in the, in the other room. I took the fucking king size bed, and. Uh, I got up, and I walked out, and I looked, and I fuck, I didn't see his bags. I went, "What the fuck?" So I went downstairs to the belt to the bell captain, and I said, "Hey," I said, uh, "You know," he said, "I," he said, "I just go talk to the concierge." So I went over to talk to the concierge. The concierge says, "Did he have like mohawk?" I said, "Yeah, he looked like a fucking wrestler." I said, "And I had that fucking fuchsia mohawk. I looked like a douchebag," and. And he was a big jacked up fucker too. And he goes, "Oh no, I put him on a bus to fucking you know, I, I, he wanted to he wanted to take a bus to Iowa. That's where he was from. So he just fucking leaves. So I'm traveling with it's me and my partner and Dutch and uh, Sid and Shiki too. No, yeah." And Shiki. And uh, they're they're saying, who the fuck's driving? I'm driving. And, like, 
like Dutch would be like, all right, uh, you got Tom Zink, it's so and so. They like they give you all these like different scenarios and say because they said because I remember Sid turning around and saying, "You can't work where the fuck. You better be able to cut a promo. You ain't gonna be around here very long." And every time they'd give him a promo, he'd stumble with it and fucking, they would all fucking go, oh, and she got, he's fucking terrible. And fucking, you know, so I get, I call fucking, I talk to Dutch, and I'm like, Dutch, like my fucking, my, my tag team partner bolted. He goes, well, fuck, man. He says, you ain't going to get paid if you don't show up. So I, I drove to Hammond. I got there, and Al Green uh, worked earlier. Like he was working like opening match, so Al worked the opening match. It's always good then, when a soul singer can can open the car. Yeah, it's it is pretty sweet. And then uh, Al came. And they just they put Al with me, and you know Al had been in the business for a couple. Of, like you know Al could fucking work, and um, so at least I had like somebody that you know that I could. And then we we I think like a couple of road trips later, like we actually traveled with that some like we was just me al and somebody else traveled i think dutch and those and sid and uh cheeky stayed is, is a threesome but yeah that was fucking like one week and my partner's gone yeah, and then I remember that story and then al fucking we 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 go probably we beat the southern boy the, the uh wild eyes Southern boys. It was uh, Tracy and fucking uh, and uh, Armstrong, Steve Armstrong. We beat them in Chicago at Halloween Havoc, and then we go into Christmas TVs. The Steiner brothers are the tag team champions. We're gonna go two segments through with the Steiners, but they're gonna take it on Al, and Al says no. So they fucking fire Al on the spot. They tell me, Merry Christmas, go on home. So I fucking go home. And I go to the, for some reason, they fly me to, oh, fuck. No, I, when they, when they blew off the fucking Black Scorpion uh, deal, it was, it ended up being Flair. It was supposed to be like Al Perez, like all these different, they, they, the the black scorpion was like thirty different fucking people. Finally, Flair was the black scorpion, and he was. I remember him just fucking. Oh, he was so fucking pissed. And um, but he they gave him this red mask that he wore, and he fucking in, in disgust he threw it in the locker room, and fucking like everybody left. And I was just I'm like, fuck man, like Ric Flair wore that mask. That that, that that's gonna be worth something. And the next thing you know, I fucking they 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 booked me as Doctor X, and they they I, they said you know, well put you under a hood. I said I have one. They said which I show up with that black scorpion, black scorpion. that black scorpion hood, and uh, yeah, that's I heard that you was. sold it to Conrad. Is that true? No, no. Okay, <clears throat> I gave it to him, and he fucking he sold it. Big Wavy Roy, you guys mentioned Sean Waltman's book, but I can't find it anywhere. What's it called? Because it's not out yet. Sean's one of my favorite ever workers and one of the nicest guys I met. Well, he is a nice guy and should be one of your favorite workers. And we're not done with the book. So uh, you'll, uh, we'll let you know. Believe me. You'll hear about it. It's, gonna, it's an amazing story, a harrowing story. It's called but, Iron Claw. Uh, yes, go see the film version. Uh, how about this, from the live This audience? one actually has Chris in it. Now that I heard he's out of the book, we have to get him in the book somehow. I'll talk to Sean. Get a whole chapter on Chris Von Eric. Uh, how just about a, just ask, Who's just ask fucking <clears throat> Joey Baseball? He might be new. New click this TV member. He sure is. Hey, big man, where does Chicago and the Allstate Arena rank in your places to visit and perform at? Do you have any stories being in Chicago? The only time I we you know, like WCW was always United Center, so. Um, that was the that was the WWE territory was always the uh, was Rosemont, and if you remember, like f- the first time we like, Rosemont used to be much smaller 
maybe held like 9,000 people before they did the renovation. <clears throat> oh. And it was, it was um, before it was the All-State Rosemont. It was a much, it was much smaller arena. And um, always, but always, a, like, it was the best wrestling building in Chicago, I thought. But we had the United Center held, in fact, like 24,000 or whatever. And uh, we did the United Center. Scott and I, um, that SummerSlam was the first event in the Chicago United Center in 94, I think. 95, 94. Yeah, 94, I think, the, the SummerSlam was in. That was when we had the Walter Payton in Scott's corner and uh, Shawn Michaels in mine. Chicago's always been a great city, mm -hmm. I mean, for, for wrestling. And they used to have the, the fucking hangout was the all out, all night place, so we'd always have. Some, it was always fucking, always a rough one. Well, all right, something else from the house. They would used to do man chow, man man cow, man cow. The radio host. Yeah, we used to do. Yeah, we used to do man cow's fucking show, like straight out of the all fucking all night bar into that fucking place. Brandon Granger on the latest Wrestling with Regret YouTube video about Starcade 2000. Kevin's in a backstage video of him getting beat up by the Thrillers. Why was he holding a bottle of Jergens lotion? Okay. What was the reference? Is that something you did on the fly? I figure. They yeah, because they, they caught him ready to. No, they no, they fucking they. You know, it's just like fuck, man. Like you know, I was getting ready to fucking get one. Those are the kind of things you do that people don't fucking pick up, and you just like that's just for your own personal because that's just good shit, right? <laughs> <clears throat> Very good. Where's the, uh... Was there something else you had? Oh, Marina, it's it's World, but it's, it's Marina Del Rey. Oh, oh the show. I had to see where the world where, where the world is. I think that's Luberdin, didn't it? It might be Luberdurm. I don't know. Yeah, I think it's... Uh, Who else in the a little, house? Always a little more, a little more emollient. Well, you, you don't know, want something that's water... Uh, uh, oh, yeah, yeah. You don't want to have to go to the reservoir no. too often. Yeah, exactly. Know. Uh, who we got? Anyone else in the house here? Ben Lutz. Hey, Kev. Do you have any grooming tips for first-time beard growers? Don't let your ha don't have a neck beard. Keep your shit trim. How far do you come up on the on the shave? I I mean you you can you gotta find like your line your, right. Yeah, everybody's got you know. I I just use my fucking the 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 inner fucking jawline. Like where your jawbone is, mm -hmm. so that just that use that as kind of a. Remember that the the chin strap action was was like popular for about seven minutes in the in the nineties. I might have had that at one point. Black sheep nerd. I know you have your own brand of cannabis, but have you tried Mike Tyson's psychedelic cannabis? What are your thoughts or experiences with them? You ever do any of Tyson's? If it's it now because it's the same one, it's the same uh, producer that produces fucking I think from H's. I've heard their fucking their weed's not that fucking good. Yeah, I just what I heard. If, you, if somebody tells me that fucking a, 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 a typical uh, or a uh, a certain uh, grower's shit's funk, there's nothing worse than me. I, I, I don't like to smoke anyway, mm -hmm. but if I'm gonna fucking smoke, man, I want to fucking I want a honey blunt. I want some good fucking, some, I want some tasty herb. I, I want something that I want something I'm gagging on. I'm fucking right, Mister Mojo Rising. Do you know which band was Scott Hall's favorite band? Who is Kevin's? Who is Sean Oliver's? Styx isn't my favorite band. But they are the song I'm listening to while asking this question. Okay, Mr. Mojo Rising. 
Um, it wouldn't be sticks for me either. Uh, how about Scott first? I know for country it was always Merle, right? Merle Haggard. Yeah. Um, what about rock band? I don't think he... It was never fucking... Scott was just not... Scott listened to, to country music. Was Scott... I, I, like, Scott wasn't a wasn't a huge music guy. It was why it was that's why it was so easy to turn him into fucking turn him on to gangster rap. So it's because he he didn't spend enough time listening to the radio in the car. He was always talking about the business. What well, Wes? What was the name of that movie we just watched with the Hitman? The Hitman. Was it called the, the killer? Man? The killer. The killer. I think it was the killer. Right? Killer. Yeah. I, one of the fucking highlights t- for that <clears throat> movie for me was the Morrissey fucking like every song was a Morrissey song. And I, I mean, I was I like the Smiths. Like that was there was like like. Uh, yeah, so I, you were like a, an alternative new wavy kind yeah, of yeah i fucking fan? huge huge depeche mode fan okay and then i like fucking uh my my love my motown right yeah i mean you know you, it depends on the genre right like there's i was always i mean my first my first i mean if i had to go to a genre i would go r&b is like like all time number one and then you know even like up until like fucking like it really got into Keith Sweat and I mean our I mean all all those guys man if, if you could fucking if you could fucking uh, could fucking just fucking just be smooth with Teddy Pendergrass mm-hmm. contemporary R and B too like Al B Shore and and oh people Bryson mm-hmm. fucking. Uh, See for me, like, see like Drake, like Drake, like I like Drake. <clears throat> um, I think I like Tupac of, of of like all the rap. I like Tupac because he was like he he sang harmony too. I mean, he could spit, but then fucking like you know, Tupac could fucking sing some harmonies. I like shit I can fuck to. Put it that way. Okay. I don't get yeah. fucking like that. Like if so, Tom Waits is out. It sounds like. Yeah. I don't want that gravelly thing. I love Tom Waits. Probably my favorite in the singer-songwriter genre, probably Tom Waits. I like Neil Young. It's by him. Um, I like Bob Mould. Bob Mould's brilliant. Yeah, Bob. Bob I, I, um, fucking, like, Smashing Pumpkins, I, I mean... There's just bands that come along. I was I was a huge police fan. Um huge Beatles fan growing up. Huge Elvis fan growing up. Sinatra. Yeah. All the classics. Anyone else in the house before little, we little, little Dion Warwick? My dad my dad absolutely dug Dion Warwick. You know what's funny? You mentioned this. Now you know I went back and watched all nine seasons of the love boat recently so um the iconic theme song which everybody can sing a few bars of was sung by jack jones written by paul williams but sung by jack jones until the last season they re-recorded it with dion warwick oh I didn't know that. and it's awful it's awful but it's not her wheelhouse that kind of thing I'm surprised. It's like, no, she can only sing Burt Bacharach songs. Yeah, it got all belty, and she's got a weird belt. The tone of her voice is all strange. But uh, anyway, someone from the audience, let's let's uh, let's wrap. We've only gone three this hours. Morning, for God's oh my makeup, Dan, and say I'm... a little prayer for you. Yeah, she was fine in that. That's that. that Forever and ever. Dan, update. Kev, what's your upcoming uh, con schedule look like? Will you be hitting MegaCon in Orlando next month trying to catch you in 2024? I think the first one I'm going to do is Albuquerque. 
I don't know. I think it's January. Yeah, I think it's January, like mid January, eighteenth, like maybe the nineteenth, twenty, and twenty first in Albuquerque. Are you doing anything in Philly for the WrestleCon? Uh, yeah, I'll do. Thing? I'll do. I'll do WrestleCon. When are we? Because you're Mike. gonna be up here. We can we do something for the fans? What can we do? I don't know. Okay. Talk to Mike. Who else we got here? <clears throat> Wesley says live show, live set. Let's do a fucking snuff film. Get the travel lodge in Philly. <clears throat> um, uh, who was up here? Brendan Douglas on the episode of Nitro where you interrupted the match wearing the Big Daddy ninety nine shirt and drinking a beer. You flipped off Goldberg and power bombed him. Any backstory on this? No. That was just how it was supposed to go. I just no fuck. It was live TV. That's the beauty of live TV. Right. He knew he was getting power bomb, but he, right. he, you know, fuck it. He doesn't know what I'm doing when when he's bent over. I'm fucking flipping him off. I come in the back. What's he gonna do? I heard you flip me. Heard you flip me off before you power bomb me. What was I supposed to do? Salute you? Exactly. Wasn't Reach like around. he was. Wasn't like he was giving a speech at a Jewish mm. fucking uh, convention. How is Bill? How did Bill not become like get a Jewish uh, award? Bill was over as fuck. I just think it's it's time. I think people. I think it. He. I always saw him referenced as one of the. You know, when they do the list of Jewish Jewish athletes and stuff, Goldberg was always on it. I love you know what I love about Bill Goldberg is you can say I mean like we all fucking you know we 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 all call him a mark and all these other things and everybody talks shit about him. The thing about Bill Goldberg is trained by Ox Baker. If that motherfucker got a phone call tomorrow from the Atlanta Falcons and I said Bill, you're gonna start at fucking linebacker, he wouldn't fucking even blink. He'd be in, in, the, in there getting his ankles. That motherfucker, mm. we did the longest yard. It's like, okay, bring in the second team, guys. We got a fucking. Bill's like, fuck that shit. I'm hitting these motherfuckers. Bill would fucking, those guys that catch a ball across the middle, Bill would fucking light them up. And I'm thinking to myself, and this is Bill. Like, I, Bill, like, I knew Bill when, he, when Bill was at the University of Georgia. Like, I knew Bill, you know, is, is, like, I've known Bill for fucking ever. And that's one thing people just don't understand. It's like, oh, you guys never get... No, Bill and I have always gotten along. We're just both fucking alpha. We're too busy pissing on the same tree and fucking pissing all over his fucking, uh, each other's feet. That's half our fucking problem. But one thing about Bill is, man, like I watched him. They, they showed a thing the other day. It was on, on Instagram. And he came out. It was I think it was at the, at the Falcons game. And, you know, did his fucking deal and just... They had him fucking uh, tackle, like spear a fucking guy. And I mean, Bill turned this fucking guy inside out. He fucking just drilled him in his stuff. He goes, whoever the fucking they were, he said, who's next or whatever. And I said, see, man, like, if I did that, I'd be like, they'd be, they'd be fucking, they'd be put me on the fucking backboard, dropping a helicopter at the 50 yard line. All right, Kev, it's Christmas. People want to go open their presents. If they chose to spend Christmas morning, I know a lot of people are grabbing this on the Tuesday, as they do. I would I would hope that fucking, like, after fucking Uncle Chuck falls asleep in the fucking, with his hand down his pants like Bundy, that we used to have every fucking Christmas, uh, once Uncle Chuck fucking falls falls asleep from the fucking turkey or fucking ham or combo, you know, and there's back then there was no fucking NBA games, so you got to find something to do. So a little little click this might be good. A little bit. We or have NFL fun. this Sunday, uh, uh, this uh, uh, Monday. I know uh, we today. have a Christmas it's Eve. Some... Yeah, there's going to be. Uh, uh, Is there a game Saturday Christmas? games, Sundays, and Monday games this week? Yeah. Yep. Well, three. Uh, uh, an early. Did we, did we give our Did we give our our picks? We gave our picks uh, not on air, so uh, okay. let's see if people can. 
people want to know who we went with this week. Who we really were. Who who we do you want to know who we are? So we tell them Let's we see. are the Raiders, mighty mighty Raiders. There they are. Thank you. All right, Green Bay given five. It's actually down to four. I just took that on my personal when it hit four. Um, uh, Who's Green Bay play? Uh, Jacks. Uh, no, I'm sorry. Um, Carolina. Uh, Carolina. Right? Yeah. Oh, have you seen like Carolina? Like nine people are at the, at the games. They they charge like I, I swear to God they charge like forty five cents a ticket. Look it up, look it up. It's like they charge like the last game there was like a thousand people in the crowd. Wow. Lions given three and a half to fucking the Lions were fucking zero and sixteen. They had a bag on their head, but they still showed up. And the uh, Seahawks giving. Uh, Carolina from ten bucks. I'm looking at the ticket available. Oh, wow! From ten, so it's like from ten. What was the cheapest? If, it, well, if from ten, so ten and up is, is what I, it would I, maybe it was. I, I swear there was a, somebody fucking. It was either four dollars or fucking. It was something unbelievable. The NFL. That's ridiculous. That's that's when you know. I said the other day, I, I called him Charlotte, and you, you guys gave me shit because I didn't fucking uh, call him the fucking Carolina Panthers. It's just like, like, everybody talks about Charlotte, like, oh, it's like fucking, it's like Atlanta. No, it's not. It's fucking Charlotte. Like, fuck, man, are you kidding me? Click this is a production of Butch and Sundance Media, produced in association with Podcast E, created by Tristan Nash, Kevin Nash, and Sean Oliver, produced by Steve Kaufman, graphics by Dominic D'Angelo, title sequence by Wesley Burleson, theme song by Dale Oliver, technical research by Tristan Nash, copyright 2023. This is the last time I'll be saying copyright 2023, as a matter of fact. Butch and Sundance Media. Kev, you know, if you want to do another one, one week from today, that'll be New Year's Day we're ringing in with our fans. Well, Why we don't fucking, we do it? We can tie, we can time this shit perfect for fucking ra- ratings, can't we? Yeah, let's do a show on Mondays. <laughs> Merry Christmas, everybody! Merry Christmas, everybody! Happy holidays. Think about Happy my Yule log. Monza. Never answers the